Mm. Oh, hello everyone and welcome to the Apostate Prophet. Uh, how is everybody doing and how is it going? David, what's up? Hey, what's up with your voice, man? What's with my voice? I don't know what's with my voice. You used, to, you used to sound like a used to sound like a a German psychologist. Oh yeah, I'm no longer a German psych. I, I was I, I was listening to uh, Norman Finkelstein today all day, Norman Finkelstein, and I have been trying. Finkelstein. To, I've been trying to get into the role and speak like him, uh, and it's been difficult on me. But I don't know if you ever listened to him, but he kind of sounds like this. No, the and, only. I mean, at least as I recall, the only thing I've ever seen by him was him with the clip that's circulating right now, which was him calling Destiny a moron or something like that. And so that is, but yeah, I didn't pay much attention to his voice, so I didn't get that. Maybe you've got some clips that will uh, enlighten me. I have plenty of clips. Um, so there, there is this joke around, uh, this joke about the debate that he uh, repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly uh deliberately said destiny's name wrong um i think he only said it like uh the correct way once or so but all the other times it was wrong what's and this also what's actually he, what's he saying so uh his name is actually stephen bonnell destiny's name and uh oh, you, uh oh i thought you meant he was messing with the name destiny no he he, he called him a, destiny as, soon as, as soon as you said it i thought of uh back to the future when he was saying density instead of destiny and i thought <laughs> oh you call him density the entire time density that'd be part no, hey no, no. future debate no. opponents of destiny go with density if you want to just call names or something it's actually better than that uh oh. in fact i was just looking at the debate stream that they had and uh looking through the comment section of the debate and somebody actually broke it down <laughs> uh it was like this like this every time mr finkelstein said his name mr <laughs> borelli mr bonnell mr barelli mr bonnell mr borelli mr morelli mr bonnell mr bonnell mr borel mr Borelli, mr farelli mr borelli mr borelli mr bonnelli mr bonnell destiny mr bonnell borel bonnell borel that's gotta be deliberate right the guy has a very, very apparent narcissistic trait. We talked about this quite often, right? Didn't we? We we talked about this before. How um, with people who have uh, these narcissistic personalities, uh, you see very often this this behavior, this attitude of them refusing to refer to people by their actual names, but instead making a nickname for everyone and using that instead, because it's like um, it's an attempt at. At, at, at basically signaling the message uh i decide what you are i don't respect your name i will give you the name that i deem appropriate and i will play with it and make it quite obvious because i have the power over you who are you and that's basically what he has been doing this whole debate yeah that sounds like that sounds like what he would be doing it's also it's also uh it's also a technique for like when uh when Andrew Tate is calling Candace Owens canned ace, canned ace, it's it's all you can actually like put the person in kind of a defensive position by, oh, uh, you're so you're so insignificant. I don't even know your name. I don't even know how to pronounce it when yeah. he had known her for for years, I'm guessing, because there was stuff where she and her husband or something like that were hanging out with him before. But and the thing is, like, she she's totally <clears throat> sucking up to him. And she's like, can I please give you a massage and praise you? And he's like, it sure can, Ace. Uh, <laughs> very, 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 very terrible dynamic. Um, Norman Finkelstein. I, I, for most of my life, I didn't really care about this guy. The first time that I came across this guy was uh, many, many years ago. I saw clips. Oh, has he been around? He's been around for a while? Yeah, for a long time. Yeah. Oh, okay, he, so he's he's not someone who got famous recently from the. No, 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 no. He's just uh, always a darling of the anti-Zionist and anti-Jewish uh, perspective, uh, despite him being uh, Jewish as well. And he pushes this whole idea that uh, Israel and Jews use the Holocaust as a demagoguery, as an industry to further their own goals and things like that, which is like a very, you know, <laughs> a very standard uh, anti-Semitic uh, thing to use, like a, um, an accusation to make, which you can very, very, very much find 
on the other side. And he has been defending that position forever now. And also siding with uh, Palestinian organizations like Hamas in justifying their atrocities and so on. Very, very, very bad. Um, here is him on October 7, which is... If you smell the foul odor of a sewer rat, look around for Mehdi Hassan. If confirmed, in other words, this sewer rat, TSR, doesn't really know if Palestinian militants took children hostage. <clears throat> uh, this is in response to Mehdi Hassan actually doing something good for once in his life and condemning uh, the act of taking children as hostages during October 7. And he's ins he insults <clears throat> him for that, calls him a sewer rat. Yeah. Yeah, look at and look at what Mehdi is saying. Taking children aside, so this is October seventh. So this is the day we hear about the attacks, and Mehdi knows as a journalist when you have breaking news of these attacks. Later information very very frequently is going to change the story of what happened because people are freaking out. Uh, journalists have not had a an opportunity to go in there and investigate everything, and so. Um, he there's there's the story that children are being taken as hostages and he just says if this is confirmed if this if this story which we're all hearing right now is confirmed this is barbarism and norman's like oh so you don't know yeah that's why he said if confirmed he's keeping it op he's keeping it open to further confirmation or disconfirmation and he's yeah, saying, yeah. if it's confirmed, then it's really messed up. He says, if confirmed, you're a sewer rat. A sewer rat. You should be exterminated. Yeah, yeah. Very, wow. very, very much. And he's still to this day kind of, uh, he still to this day doesn't acknowledge uh, really that, uh, you know, Hamas's role in killing all of the civilians or in killing um it was the Jews. He, he he does acknowledge, as so far as I've seen during the debate as well, that uh, Hamas did kill, or that Palestinian organizations uh, led by Hamas did kill most of the civilians, and he agrees with the number of civilians that were killed. He still, however, uh, goes for that whole idea of, uh, but we we don't know how many of them were killed by IDF themselves, and of course that doesn't... Uh, you know, that that doesn't make you condemn the IDF. And I don't know. Very, very, very difficult person. Sounds like a real Enjoy. winner. A big, big winner. Hey, did you see this, by the way? Yeah, I saw that. So what did they say? What are they saying? Lightning struck in the shape of Israel? There was <laughs> no, not Israel, Palestine. Oh, Palestine. Oopsie. Well, they, they say uh... Oopsie. You see, <laughs> this is the proof. <laughs> I'm not even sure if this is in any way authentic, but it just it looks very weird. If it and, is, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And they're like, oh look, Allah made the made the shape of Palestine to send his blessings. He and can't, he promised that good days are coming. He can't give us a good argument or a good military to defeat them, but man, he made an awesome light show. Plus, he didn't really get it right. I mean, it's like the shape is a little bit messed up. And, you know, if he was uh, in, in kindergarten or something and he drew this, they would say, OK, yeah, you need to work on that. But still, at least he tried. Like That's our last message here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which I. All right, I'll have my five-year-old draw uh, draw Israel and show that a five, my five-year-old can draw better than uh, Allah. Yeah, here's Israel, and here is this thing that they call Palestine. Obviously, it doesn't look the same. Yeah, Allah, you got to get this right. You see the bottom area there? It kind of it's just kind of almost a straight line. You got like this squiggly thing going down here, and they have this weird tangent going off out on the side. And then over here, over here, it looks like you've got steps, whereas uh, you know, actual Israel is just like this. It's steep sloping, not not steps. So yeah, this is this is pretty bad. I'd give this, this, this a this I'd is... give this a D minus. In really? Art class. Yeah. D minus art class. Mm -hmm. That's too that's too good. Huh? That's a little bit too good. Um hold up. Uh trying to fix my screenies here. So what else is going on, David? What's up? What else is going on? Um yeah, nothing. I'm just trying to make you talk so that uh yo, 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 like hey, 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 what's up? Yo, yo, it's yo me here. And the magic go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. So, and then 
anyway, let's just let's. Just, hey, let's I was just... hanging out with Harris last night. I saw, I saw. Uh, it's it's very disgraceful that you would do something like that. Uh, well, we all agreed. We all agreed. We all agreed that uh, you have to be shut down um, for working with uh, non atheists. That's true. That's well, true. Apostate Aladdin. Yeah, we all had a meeting. We're like, this is apostate Aladdin. He is correct. Who? Apostate Aladdin. I don't know who that is. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't that doesn't ring a bell. It doesn't sound familiar at all. It sounds like a joke. <laughs> apostate Aladdin. Who calls themselves apostate Aladdin? Yeah, what's up with all these guys? As soon as soon as you had one one apostate in his name then everyone had to do it exactly 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 so let's have a look at this let's have a look at what's going on here all right so i was listening to the debate here and um you see a lot of clips going around of people saying oh look here destiny is uh destiny is being completely destroyed it yeah i saw that i saw like 50 of those i saw like and i wasn't even looking for it they were just popping up in various places uh yeah. so like yeah so like 50 of those uh and there's uh one that people keep uh saying the exact same thing on like they're bots or something like that but i don't know they keep saying uh i could watch Norman Finkelstein calling Destiny a moron all day long or something like that. And it, it is also so funny because um, the issue is he did call him a moron and he did call him uh, other names. However, he did that almost every yeah. single time after he was uh, called out by Destiny. Correctly. The court is not asked at this present phase for not uh, for for making a mistake or for not knowing something. Apart from this. this is so this guy here is uh, Benny Morris. He's one of the most renowned uh, scholars on the history of Israel and uh, the 1948 is war and so on. So he is uh, together with Destiny on the pro-Israel side, uh, whereas the other side, um, Norman Finkelstein and some other guy, Rabani, um, a journalist, they are arguing for, for Palestine and against Israel. And it turned very, very strange. Hey. Hey, Norman Finkelstein should have been like, look at Destiny showing up with a Starbucks cup, knowing that Muslims are boycotting Starbucks. Shame on him. This is a dog whistle, a dog whistle to white supremacists. He has been. He, he was worse during the whole thing. He was like, uh, he was just calling Destiny names uh whenever destiny was getting something right or asking him if he even if he knows what he's talking about then he was like i read ten thousand books you only read wikipedia yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i'm sure they believe it and if the hamas sure is hiding behind I'm sure they believe civilians every died. time they target every that. time they target a kid, I'm sure they believe it's Hamas. They when they kid, kids. yeah, when they yeah, when they killed the four kids in the on the uh, they believe yeah, they I know they Hamas believe it, even though they were you diminutive that, size, they, you know, even though they were yeah, diminutive that angle, you yeah, don't yeah, see the size. Yeah, yeah, no, they saw you the don't size. see but the let's, size. Let's see the size. Oh, yeah, the guy's actually arguing that you can uh, make out the size of a child from a drone. I know here, what he's quoting here, correctly. Here. You've lied about this particular yeah. instance in the uh, past. Mr. Those kids weren't just on the beach, as is often stated in articles. Those kids were literally coming out of a previously identified Hamas compound oh, yeah, that they had operated from. Yeah, yeah. They literally Mr. Did, you Morelli, can you can Mr. Google Mr. Morelli, with all Mr. due respect, with all due respect, yeah. you're such a fantastic moron. It's uh -huh. terrifying. <laughs> he <laughs> said moron. Moron. You're such a fantastic moron <laughs> density. <laughs> the funny thing is, um, these people who watch this debate are so shallow, or I would say most of them probably didn't really watch the debate, but uh they think like here you can see that Benny Morris uh starts laughing when Norman Finkelstein insults destiny. I would laugh too, probably, because it's 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 funny and it looks ridiculous. And they're like, look, even his debate partner is laughing at him. Norman Finkelstein is so great. Whoa. Fantastic moron. It's uh -huh. terrifying. <laughs> he's, he's laughing about it because the way he insults him in the dumbest ways is funny. That that wharf was filled with journalists. There were tens scores of journalists. That was an old fisherman's shack what are you talking about it's so painful it's so painful to listen to this idiocy 
And to but be clear, me, on the other side, let, you're implying okay. that a strike was okay on the Israeli okay. side where they said, we're just going to kill four hey, Palestinian hey, children today for no hey, reason. Hey, hey, do you believe that? Do you, know, do you, you believe know, that? Do you okay, believe that? And then they will not, not pay attention to the fact that Benny Morris, the great scholar here, actually so many times approves of destiny and says he's right or respond to this, respond to what he just said and so on. The, 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 great, the greatest scholar in the room here is acknowledging destiny and respectfully agreeing with him and pressing the other side to respond to him so many times. And yeah. This, uh, this Finkelstein... <laughs> he said just based on the little bit that i've heard he seems like he could have been like a character on like seinfeld or something like that like one of seinfeld's relatives like his uncle or something like that no jerry what are we gonna do about this something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is that is very 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 interesting and people share these things like people share the bits like these um here that this clip look I could watch it forever. Special intent. I'm gonna special intent. Did you read the case? Yeah. Uh, it's such a moron. I'm gonna ask you objective. again. Yes. Please stop displaying your imbecility. Okay, I'm do sorry not, if you think do, the declaration of the put on, is imbecility. Don't put on public display that ah. you're a moron. At least have the self-possession to shut up. Did I I'm read the case? special intent? And you know what the funny thing is? What? The funny thing is, um, this part here, people focus on how this is amazing. No, Norman Finkelstein is obliterating him. If you actually listen to the to the to what is to what happens here right before this, you will see that destiny is right, and Norman Finkelstein is being kind of exposed here for not knowing what he's talking about. Upon which he gets angry and starts insulting destiny, which is <laughs> which is what always happens here. Here, look. Now, Destiny here brings up a point when they're talking about genocide. Africa's allegations of genocide are well-founded. Yeah, I, I sped this up earlier. I was listening to it because Norman Finkelstein is very... They're not uh, well-founded. They're not even well-founded. The point I, is, you said that plausible was a I, high I, standard. It is absolutely I, not. It is uh, a misrepresentation of the strength of the case against Israel, just like the majority not, of the quotes they have every, in this case are. And also, you okay. said it was an extremely well-founded case. They spend like one-fourth of all of the quotations, some even pulled from the Goldstone report, that try to uh, uh, that actually deal with the intent part. Mm -hmm. Which is, by the way, I think you guys, I don't know if you use the phrase, the dolus specialis, that the intentional part of genocide... Sorry, I don't know the, that the, term. The, the, I, think it's, I think it's called dolo specialis. It's the most important part of genocide, which is proving the special, it's a highly special intent to commit genocide. It's That's possible right. that What Destiny is saying here, dolo specialis, the term is actually mentioned in the genocide convention. It's, it's, also, it's also mentioned in the ICJ report, which they published, which is supposed to be relevant and which these guys are supposed to know about. Israel could... That's mens rea. No. The men's rate, they, yes, I understand the state of mind, but the, the, mm -hmm. for genocide, there is, it's called right. dolus specialis. It's a highly special intent. Did you read the case? Yeah. Uh, it is a highly rally. special intent. I'm going to ask you again. Genocide. Yes. <laughs> Please stop displaying your imbecility. Okay, I'm do sorry not, if you think do, the declaration of the judge is imbecility. Don't put on public display that ah. you're a moron. At least have the self-possession to shut up. Did I I'm read the case? my Mr. Did you see what just happened here? So from the background of the situation and from checking the documents afterwards, I know for a fact that what Destiny said here is right. And he is actually speaking of the appropriate term found in the documents. And when Norman Finkelstein obviously doesn't really, uh, seems like he doesn't know what Destiny is talking about, he says, did you even read the case? And Norm then gets very angry and starts yelling at him. It's a Mr. Morelli, which is not his name. It's a Mr. Morelli, please stop displaying your imbecility. <laughs> so just to recap here, uh, <laughs> Norm, Norm Finkelstein, uh, it looks uh, like he's one of the people who says that Israel's committing genocide. Yeah. And then Destiny responds... For it to actually be genocide, there has to be the intent of committing genocide. Like, you can't be going after uh, a terrorist group or something like that, and they hide behind people, and they get killed, and then you say genocide. Well, if I was actually going after the terrorist group and not trying to wipe out a group of people or something like that, then 
it's not genocide. So your destiny is saying your intent matters. And what's the intent here? How do you show what the intent is? That the intent is for genocide. And Norman Finkelstein's response is, you're a moron. You're an imbecile. Exit stage left. Something like yeah. that. And then exactly. people and then people celebrate that, even though Destiny's point on the little bit that I've seen is perfectly valid and and very important. Yeah, yeah, precisely, precisely. <laughs> and um, there is also, of course, the accusation by Norman Finkelstein that Destiny doesn't know what he's talking about and he's just reading Wikipedia articles. Here is the UN. Here's a UN article on the on genocide. It mentions. It here as well like you can you can easily access it it is uh mm. this special intent or dolus specialis that makes the crime of genocide so unique in addition case law has associated intent with the existence of a state or organizational plan or policy even if the definition of genocide in, in international law does not include that element uh yeah go, go to go to right before that because they they actually explain it. it says to constitute genocide so the intent the intent is the most difficult element to determine mm -hmm. To constitute genocide, there must be a proven intent on the part of the perpetrators to physically destroy a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. Cultural destruction does not suffice. <laughs> Gosh, you could destroy a culture, it wouldn't suffice. Nor does an intention to simply disperse a group. You have to actually, so for this to apply, in the case of Gaza with Israel, um, they would have to be trying to completely exterminate, let's see, proven intent to physically destroy, to physically destroy all of Gaza or a particular ethnic, racial, or religious group. They have the intent has to be to destroy them. And we've pointed out a thousand times. If that's the intent, if Israel, with their with their sub two to one civilian to uh, to fighter ratio, if they are intending to just exterminate the population or wipe out the population, they are the worst genociders in all of history. <laughs> The most incompetent genocide. That would that would that would be my defense in court. It would just be okay, guys. Do, so you think we, our intent is to completely destroy them? We have all the weapons in the world to do so. We could do it five minutes from now. We could wipe out the entire population in the next five minutes. Well, on what are you basing that our intent is to do so? We're just really, really, we're failing really hard at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and, the, and there is there is this um, by Human Rights Watch, for example, is this article which me which mentions uh, it comes to the mental state mens rea as uh, Finkelstein here uh, mentioned, but then it it, it then uh, you know, defines it as special intent or dolus specialis, which uh, is the term again which appears here. That's a made up times. word. I've never uh, heard that before. I've read ten thousand books, but never heard it. The intent is required prior to the commission of acts. Intent can be inferred, which is which is very 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 difficult, mm -hmm. uh, and and so on. But um, so the, the the entire idea here is um, there must be the special intent, the very deliberate, the very special intent to indeed destroy uh, this particular group or to inflict severe harm on this on this particular group, from which it is it would be very very difficult to recover and to you know to permanently damage this group and their existence um so even if something went wrong right there, there was there was a war and um during the fighting something went wrong and for some reason uh because of crossfire because of different uh, attacks because of different sequence of 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 events um half of the population on the other side died during the war like a major explosion happened that swallowed everyone i don't know let's just make up some really really messed up weird story however they could not establish that um the side that is accused of inflicting that suffering ever had a plan of destroying the other side it would be very hard to prove that that is a genocide it would be um you know a, a massacre it would be 
a very unfortunate, a huge crisis, a big tragedy, but it's very hard to prove that it's actually a genocide, that it was actually intended, that the side that is uh, accused of being responsible for this actually intended to, co to inflict such a destruction on the other side. So it's it's a very complicated thing, but Norman Finkelstein, despite being so well read and um, repeatedly saying here, I stick to the facts. I am very literate. I read ten thousand books. Doesn't seem to give this topic the respect that it deserves, but instead joins these uh, memers almost in just saying this is a genocide. It is a genocide. That's what it is. Anyway. Apostate Boohoo says, Apostate Boohoo says, what if someone has, <laughs> who has limited time came to your stream and found you were running late? How do you think they would feel? <laughs> He's got a point. Well, uh, this is why yeah, you're the, to... the dark side of AP's live streams. The dark side of live streams. The dark side of anti-Islam YouTube coming late to the live streams have you ever thought about how many people will be discouraged and disgruntled and disheartened when you arrive late to a live stream can you think about the consequences it's literally genocide it borders on ethnic cleansing <laughs> man oh man oh man um yeah hey, on camera oh, Mr. Morelli, I'm yours in Mr. Books, Morelli. Okay? I read the I like this guy you're right laughing. He's, he's funny. I read <laughs> all of the the uh, ma the majority opinion, the declarations. I read Aaron Barak's declaration. Then why are you I lying and saying are, plausible is a high standard? Because I said, even reaching the benchmark of plausibility is a very high standard in the world. It's the equivalent of a regional player qualifying for an Olympics. It's This is so uh, ridiculous. And this is why um, when I look at this guy talk and make arguments, it just looks like a joke to me. And many other people, uh, scholars, agree on it. Um, Destiny here, who is a layman, not a scholar, is making an important point, which is um, if a court says, like the International Court of Justice, that an accusation against Israel of uh, committing or um, causing or not preventing a genocide is plausible, it doesn't mean that the claim has any actual strength. It just means it could be or could not be, but it will be evaluated and all the evidence will be analyzed. That's basically what it means. So it may or may not be happening and we will look into that. But at this point, we have no reason to outright dismiss it or to acknowledge that it is indeed happening. However, Norman Finkelstein is acting like when the court says it is plausible that the accusations are true, it very much hints at uh, the genocide actually taking place, which is not true. It's, it's a complete distortion of the facts. And the guy just hides behind his uh, reputation as a scholar to distort realities in such a way, which um, just raises the question, is he ignorant or is he a liar? We do not know. The it's dark side of Norman Finkelstein. The dark side of scholars. <laughs> Still two steps removed. You may not be on the team and you may not get a medal, but to get qualified, which in this context is the equivalent of plausible, you must be doing something pretty horrible. And point, as it happens, court, as it happens, the court, from Murgatroyd. As, as, as <laughs> the court will rule. As, Remember what I just told you. The court I don't rule. expect there to be no even chance. around when the court reaches its final decision. Why? Why? They'll take a long, long time. Two years, three. No. Years. <laughs> this guy. Oh, I don't think they'll take two or three years. I mean, but, uh, Bosnia, but, which was admittedly a special type of case, because 
they were accusing Serbia of sponsoring the Bosnian Serbs. That took, I think, 17 years from... I actually want to look at uh, a specific part here. But hey, before this, actually, um, after this, I want to look at something different, which is... Uh... So the other day, uh, it came out, or Dest somebody brought to Destiny's attention that there is a court case from 2015 where Norman Finkelstein went to court over harassing his... Um, neighbors his hispanic neighbors because they were making too much noise and he was brutally harassing them his hispanic neighbors yes That's and messed up and he was saying Sounds to them oh, you will be deported you i will call immigration services and they i'm will gonna have to you. deport you you're gonna have to be deported you think you can come over here playing all that salsa music and dancing all over the floor while i'm trying to read my ten thousand books down here what's wrong with you at the and the, and, the, and the reason why people bring this up is, uh, of course, it has nothing to do with the debate. It has nothing to do with all of this stuff. But isn't it quite, quite ironic that this guy who is pretending to stand up for Palestinians and for you know uh, people's rights to live and not to be displaced and so on uh, is in private <laughs> threatening... <laughs> threatening his neighbors because they're making too much noise uh, with deportation, with having their children taken away by Child Protective Services, and so on. It, now it, listen, is... <laughs> there's only one day when I'm going to let you get away with this, and that's Cinco de Mayo. Any other day, and I'm going to have ice in here, taking you guys back where you belong, back where you come from. Come on, Mr. Trump, build the wall, build the wall. <laughs> And death to Israel. But <laughs> but I want to uh, first look at something here that is relevant to the debate. Uh, Norman Finkelstein, during this debate, uh, misquoted and misrepresented Benny Morris um, on uh, him allegedly suggesting that uh, displacing people, displacing Arabs was a part of Zionism and that Zionists early on acknowledged that. So let's just listen to that for a little bit here. Which of course, it's nonsense. But but they, they had a, connect, a strong connection for thousands of years to the land to which they wanted to return and returned there. They found that on the land lived hundreds of thousands of Arabs. And the question was how to accommodate the vision of a Jewish state in Palestine, alongside the existence of these um, um, Arab masses living on, who were indigenous, in fact, to the land by that stage. Um, and the idea of partition, uh, because they couldn't live together, because the Arabs didn't want to live together with the Jews. And I think the Jews also didn't want to live together in one state with Arabs in general. The idea of partition was the thing which um, the Zionists accepted, Okay, we can we can only get a small part of Palestine. Uh, the Arabs will get in uh, 37 most of Palestine in 1947. The the ratios were changed, but we can we can uh, live side by side with each other in a partitioned Palestine. And this was the essence of it. Uh, the idea of transfer uh, it was there, but it was never adopted by, as policy. But in 1947, 48, the Arabs attacked, trying to destroy essentially the Jewish, the Zionist enterprise and the emergent Jewish state. And uh, um, the reaction was a uh, transfer in some way, uh, uh, not as policy, but this is what happened on the battlefield. And this is also what Ben Gurion at some point began to want as well. Right. So the the question here is uh, the transfer of the Arab populations from this from the land, because they are accusing the Zionists of deporting or displacing the Arab population, and accusing the the Zionists or the Israeli side of always having had that goal, um, which is not true. And Benny Morris explains that it is not true; that it's rather a consequence of the of the events. Hey, Lex Friedman. Yeah, well, he was actually moderating the debate. What's yeah. his What's his position on all this? He's like, uh, I hope we can one day stop fighting and find a way to make peace by just loving each other and giving each other big kisses on each other's cheeks. Maybe that will bring peace to all of these complicated matters, which I frankly do not really understand. But uh, how about you guys talk and try to figure this out? And maybe tonight we can put an end to this Israel-Palestine conflict. That was basically his position. And as long as I say this in my calm, soothing voice, wearing my Blues Brothers suit, then... <laughs> 
<laughs> I, with all due respect to this guy, and... no, I like, I like, I like Lex Friedman. I've only, I've only watched a couple of his things. I watched his uh, thing with Zuckerberg and one or two others, but I, but I his, his I like... political takes are just, I don't know. There was a there was a funny clip here which uh, Destiny shared. Uh, which is um, poor Lex Friedman. <laughs> yeah. I will do more debates and conversations on these difficult topics, and I will continue to search for hope in the midst of death and destruction. What what gives you hope? There is no hope. No, it's an extreme. No, I don't. <laughs> 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 basically <laughs> well i i i'm starting to think maybe there is no hope which is why i always wear this wear the suit i plan to be buried in i'm ready well, to go now you know, one of the first um books on this issue uh i read uh when i was still in high school found it very clear it is in a there is one okay to hear the thing i seem to I'm, i seem to have kind of messed up the timestamp here because <laughs> i thought it was beginning at this part but norman fingelstein is making the accusation here and let me let me see in builds uh published in build in build let's see where this is first mentioned what the hell is this is the very beginning huh wait. wait and then he wrote in another book trans necessarily and elementally expansionist. Okay, Alas, see. this was not to be. As Professor Morris has written, quote, Zionist ideology and practice were necessarily and elementally expansionist. And then he wrote in another book, Transfer, the euphemism for expulsion, Transfer was inevitable and inbuilt into Zionism because it sought to transform a land which was. When I first listened to this, I was I, I checked if I put the speed on slow accidentally, but this is the way he speaks. And then I put it on 1.75. Arab into a Jewish state, and a Jewish state could not have arisen without a major displacement of Arab population. And no, first I put it on 1.5, 1, 1. and it was still, still too slow. Because this aim automatically produced resistance among the Arabs, which in turn persuaded the Yeshuvs. Then I put it on 1.75, and it was still slow. I put it on 2, then it was OK. But then Destiny comes in and speaks like, <laughs> Leaders, the Yeshuvs being the Jewish community, the Yeshuvs leaders that a hostile Arab majority or a large minority could not remain in place if a Jewish state was to arise or safely endure. Or, as Professor Morris retrospectively put it, quote, a removing of a population. Was so um, they have a whole discussion about this quote that he's that he's uh, using here forever during the debate. And they're basically accusing Benny Morris of having admitted in his uh, book, which is called The Birth of the Palestinian Refugee Problem Revisited, uh, of acknowledging that Zionism is uh, always has been expansionist and always has been um, planning on displacing the Arab population. So what I did was to go to that book and uh, go to the relevant section that um, Norman Finkelstein has been quoting, which Benny Morris said is a misrepresentation of his actual words and it's taken out of context mm. and i checked for myself to see if it's actually misrepresented mm. or not exactly. because this would be like the the major case against benny morris and against zionism during this debate now here is the quote that he brings but transfer was inevitable and inbuilt into zionism because it sought to transform a land which was arab into a jewish state and the jewish state could not have arisen without a major displacement of arab population this is the quote here the relevant quote from this book from this part which they discuss for an hour or so 
after this. And Benny Morris keeps saying, no, you took that out of context. You took it out of context. Because if you read it within the context, I'm not saying that Zionism has always been expansionist and uh, about displacement and so on. To make clear again, this is from the book, The Birth of Palestine, Palestinian Refugee Problem Revisited by Benny Morris. The book is like 600 or 700 pages or so. Um, if you look at it in the, with the actual context, I marked here the, the quotation in blue, then uh, relevant parts that should be read to understand the context properly in red, and of course, a few highlights here in yellow. <laughs> what is actually being said here is, what then was the connection between Zionist transfer thinking before 1948 and what actually happened during the first Arab-Israeli war? Arab and pro-Arab commentators and historians have charged that this thinking amounted to pre-planning and what happened in 1948, the displacement of Arabs, was simply a systematic implementation of Zionist ideology and of a Zionist master plan of expulsion. So it's very clear here that he says that the Arab side has been making these assertions. It's not his word. He doesn't agree with it. Old school Zionist commentators and historians have argued that the sporadic talk among Zionist leaders of transfer was mere pipe dreaming. It was never undertaken systematically or seriously. Hence, there was no deliberation and premeditation behind what happened in, in 1948. And the creation of the refugee problem owed nothing to pre-planning and everything to the circumstances of the war and the moment. Chaos, immediate military needs and dictates, whims of personality and so on. So he put these two per, uh, perspectives here. Then he comes with his explanation. My feeling is that the transfer thinking and near consensus that emerged in the 1930s and early 1940s was not tantamount to pre-planning and did not issue in the production of a policy or master plan of expulsion. The Yishuv the Jewish community, and its military forces did not enter the 1948 war, which was initiated by the Arab side, with a policy or plan for expulsion. It's pretty clear to this point, right? He's basically saying that there was no such plan and that the Zionists did not enter this war with the aim of uh, ex you know, uh, expulsion, with the aim of displacing or getting rid of the Arab population. Then he adds this. And this is the only thing that is taken out of context. But transfer was inevitable and inbuilt into Zionism because it sought to transform a land which was Arab into a Jewish state. And a Jewish state could not have arisen without a major displacement of Arab population. Sounds pretty problematic. It, it sounds very much like he's saying, in order for Zionism to work, Arabs must go, right? Although it doesn't really make much sense here. But he then explains pretty much the reasoning of it. And because this aim automatically produced resistance among the Arabs, which in turn persuaded the Yeshiva's leaders that a hostile Arab majority or large minority could not remain in place if a Jewish state was to arise or safely, safely endure. By 1948, transfer was in the air. The transfer thinking that preceded the war contributed to the denouement by, con by conditioning the Jewish population, political parties, military organizations, and military and civilian leadership for what transpired. Thinking about the possibility Possibilities of transfer in the 1930s and 1940s had prepared and conditioned hearts and minds for its implementation in the course of 1948, so that, as it occurred, few voiced protest or doubt. It was accepted as inevitable and natural by the bulk of the Jewish population. The fact that Palestine's Arabs and the Arab states had rejected the UN partition resolution and to nip it in the bud, had launched the hostilities that snowballed into full-scale civil war, and that the Arab states had invaded Palestine and attacked Israel in May 1948, only hardened Jewish hearts toward the Palestinian Arabs, who were seen as mortal enemies. And should they be co-opted into the Jewish state, a potential fifth column. A fifth column is uh, a minority or a group in fact that is that has the potential of um, um, you know, revolting or going against the, the current thing and endangering the future. 
Thus, the expulsions that periodically dotted the Palestinian Arab ex exodus raised few eyebrows, and thus the Yeshua's leaders, parties, and population in mid-war accepted without significant dissent or protest the militarily and politically sensible decision not to allow an Arab refugee return, and so on. So if you read all of this in context, what Benny Morris is actually saying here is he thinks it is inevitable and part of Zionism that this displacement would take place. It is pretty much naturally there. But he also says very clearly that the Zionists, the Jewish community living in this land, never ever really had a master plan or an acknowledgement that they would actually displace the Arab population. It's quite clear here. Very, very clear. But Norman Finkelstein took this out of context, and so many others do too, which is why they accuse uh, scholars like Benny Morris at Zionists of being, uh, you know, these, these displacers, these uh, people who are for expulsion, and so on. When Benny Morris here clearly said that this was never really the master plan. There never was such a policy. It came as a result of everything that happened, although he still thinks that it was inevitable. That's it. There was a lot of reading here and a lot of going into this stuff. And I know this is too much reading. Nowadays, people shouldn't be reading. They should be watching TikTok videos. And I'm sorry that I'm not watching a TikTok video, but instead reading a text. Maybe next time I could watch TikTok videos instead. What do you think, David? Yeah. Um, the people can't pay attention to like an entire page in, in a quarter here. Why are you insulting people? I'm saying the Dawa community literally cannot read a headline and understand it. How are they supposed to understand a, a page and a quarter of an actual scholarly work? Come on, be realistic here. <laughs> Anyway, that's that. Now, now I want to go into something different and look into the insanities of uh, Dr. Norman Finkelstein. Make it make it a little bit more fun here. Um, I don't know if people came across some of the stuff that has been going around. However, here are some things that. Uh, came out when uh, it turned out that Norman Finkelstein had a, has a history of harassing his neighbors. Uh, here, here's a photo, first off, which is of, um, of, a, of the door of the neighbors that he apparently hit and damaged to make noise and harass them. But I had to. Someone was in a sombrero in there, and that freaked me out. <laughs> uh, here is a letter that he puts on their door, which says, if you stomp and bang on your bedroom floor in the morning between 6.30 and 8.30 a.m., I will bang on your door and on my bedroom ceiling between 3.30 and 5 a.m. the next morning. If I don't sleep, you don't sleep. If you can't control yourself, you can rent the gorilla cage in the Bronx Zoo. I will happily supply fresh bananas. And I, I was, I've been learning about you watching the Speedy Gonzalez cartoon. I will provide you with cheese if that's what you want. What is wrong with this dude, man? <laughs> he actually tells them to go and dread uh, a gorilla cage at the zoo, and he will bring them bananas. <laughs> um, all of this is very interesting. Very, very interesting. It actually starts with uh, him filing a complaint and basically um, accusing the other side of uh, ruining his, uh, his reputation by making complaints about him and threatening to kill him and running a fake doctor's business and of being um, illegal immigrants and, uh, and all that stuff, for which they then file a counterclaim and say, this guy is completely insane. 
and say, uh, we deny all of these paragraphs. And there is a list of all the paragraphs. And uh, it looks like this. Defendants specifically deny paragraphs 11, 12, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28, and so on. Uh, <laughs> and the others for lack of knowledge and all that. They then explain uh, some of the things here. Um, let's see. On or about the summer of 2015, plaintiff Norman Finkelstein, apparently claiming that the defendants were intentionally making noise in their apartment purposely to annoy plaintiff, started a campaign of harassment and intimidation against the defendants in order to drive them out of the apartment. Plaintiffs made false and malicious reports against the defendants to the Child Protective Services seeking to have the defendant's daughter, about two years old, taken away from the defendants. <laughs> I can tell from all the banging up there that they're doing some Lucha Libre stuff, and that's just not a safe environment <laughs> for a two-year-old. Uh, on or about August 14, 2015, defendants received a letter, Exhibit A, from Child Protective Services that a report had been filed against them for suspected child abuse or maltreatment. But the CPS dismissed the complaints and advised the defendants in a letter, Exhibit B, that the complaints against them were unfounded. Let's have a look at that letter, right? <laughs> it's pretty weird. <laughs> it is pretty, pretty weird. This is all public record, by the way, so no worries. Um, wait, is this it? That's exhibit A at the bottom, right? The case cracker, exhibit A. Wait, hold on. Let me see this. Let me see. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. That's it. Unknown, unknown. Dear unknown, unknown. <laughs> wait, is this... The letter for what is this? Why are you asking us? On or about August, the defendants received a letter from Child Protective Services. Okay, this is from Child Protective Services. So this is a letter to inform them that uh, that they received a report about a child being mistreated, and uh, they are just informing them that such a case is going on. Okay, there is nothing. There is nothing important here. This is just a notification letter. Plaintiff also made false reports to the police and immigration authorities against the defendants without just cause, other than to harass the defendants. On or about August 15, plaintiff and defendant so and so were in an elevator at the subject ap ap apartment building. Plaintiff suddenly confronted the defendant Carol something, yelling, "Your husband is a drug addict. I'm a professor. I am a doctor." I will do everything for them to take away your daughter. Seriously, this is in here. Look. Um, well, okay, it's already known. Your husband is a drug addict. I'm a professor. I'm a doctor. I will do everything for them to take away your daughter. <laughs> This out, outrageous outburst shocked the defendant. Refusing to be bullied, defendant tried to defend herself and her family and told plaintiff that he is not the only professional in the building. After the aforesaid incident, plaintiff committed more intimidating and hateful actions against the defendants hateful on several action. occasions. These incidents compelled the defendants to contact the police. And that poor little two-year-old, all they feed her is tacos and jalapenos. <laughs> Something has to be done to get them out of my building and get some oh. get some nice white people in here. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy, man? <laughs> this man has real problems. Uh, uh, plaintiff struck defendant's apartment door with heavy blows from a heavy object. Attached is a picture of the damage to the defendant's door as a result of the blows. We saw that earlier. Plaintiff would also strike the walls and ceiling of his own apartment, which would rattle and terrify the defendant's family upstairs. Plaintiff would engage in unprompted harassing conduct with defendants. At one point, plaintiff went up to the defendant's apartment and rang the buzzer and refused to let go of the buzzer. This act caused the defendants, and especially their baby daughter, to hide in fear. This dude... <laughs> This dude's lucky he didn't mess with the wrong ones. I mean, I've been, I've been around people who you start harassing them and you're you're freaking out the, the guy's wife or daughter or something like that. You're just gonna you're just gonna knock all your teeth out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's actually get to one of those letters. 
oh yeah okay this is the first one that is mentioned if you don't sleep i don't sleep uh bananas and so on um then here's another letter look at this starting at 3 30 a.m you will not be sleeping tonight <laughs> And that's it. That's the letter. <laughs> that's it. And then it goes on to say, oh, this one. This is the funniest, actually. Um, it's just this. Too, too bad, good. apes. You're not sleeping tonight. <laughs> he repeatedly calls them apes. <laughs> Said you are a bunch of gorillas, bunch of apes. How about you go to the zoo, and That's I will funny. give you bananas. It's funny <laughs> that he puts all this stuff into writing. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Why even would he do this? It's so ridiculous. Like why? Why would he even write this stuff down? Like he doesn't. Need, he doesn't just say it. He doesn't just say it or yell it or something like that. He actually like put. He 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 provides the appropriate documentation. Yeah, yeah. And you know what the funniest thing is? We spoke of narcissism earlier. Look at this one here. This appears at some point. I warned you that you will never win against me. You should have Googled my name. Norman Paul Finkelstein. State Prophet. <laughs> Norman Finkelstein. Or gone to YouTube and entered my name. Now it is too late. Hey, hey. If you just change this, if you just change Norman Finkelstein to apostate prophet there, you could send this to uh, apostate Aladdin. <laughs> 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 but seriously who writes this man you will never win against me okay. you will never are... win you'll never win against me you should have googled my name norman finkelstein or gone to youtube and entered my name now it's too late now you're going to the zoo i'll bring you your bananas you have to say it much slower if he said if he spoke this out it would be like <clears throat> i warned you that you will never win against me. You should have Googled my name, Norman Finkelstein. You or should have to YouTube Googled my name. Entered my name. It's Norman. No. Norman it Finkelstein. Is too late. Or gone to YouTube and entered. <laughs> my name <laughs> uh, this is so so ridiculous um, hey hey you could change uh you could change uh too late apes to apis and then i will apostate aladdin could send that back to you as a response <laughs> you guys can communicate entirely in norman finkelstein uh dis letters um if you stomp and bang on your bedroom floor in the morning, uh, I will happily supply bananas. You will not be sleeping. Uh, plaintiff mocked and denigrated the defendants and called them apes and told them they will not be sleeping that night. He wrote, too bad, apes. You're not sleeping tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, it says they threatened to kill me when it never happened, as they say. He also accused them of, of, of being involved in Medicare and Medicaid fraud and impersonating a doctor, and that they threatened his life and the police should come and take care of them, which they say never happened, and they're not such people, and they were afraid of him the whole time. Um, then there is here this. You are on notice. Two officers from the 61st precinct knocked on your door this morning and again this evening. I told them that you were inside and refused to open the door. I pointed to your car parked in front of the building. I informed them two times that Roberto threatened to kill me in the elevator. I also informed that Carol was involved in Medicare, Medicaid fraud and impersonated a doctor. If anything happens to me, you will end up in jail. You had better stop the noise and stop threatening my life. I was advised by the officers to call 911 every time the noise starts or you threaten my life to office the officer said that sooner or later you will not be able to hide anymore <laughs> and the officers apparently have no knowledge of such a conversation um <laughs> uh and then here is this you committed the biggest mistake of your life yesterday 
I had two guests in my apartment, one of them a professor of criminology. They listened to the noise for four hours. At midnight, we all went together to the police precinct where we all spoke to several police officers. The police are now fully informed about the situation. They urged me to call 311 the moment the noise starts again. David, what is 311? Uh, that's, um, that's some different one. Like they it came is? up with some different ones. Yeah. It's an actual thing. Okay. I think so. They had they had the different numbers for different purposes. I guess that's oh, what because okay. you know you don't you don't want the you don't want some dispute over noise in an apartment to actually go to nine one one. So I think they invented yeah. some different versions of the numbers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I also contacted Child Protection Services again. I already spoke to several of your friends in the elevator on the way to your party about you. I now know your places of employment, which I will contact this week. Here is your big problem. On Tuesday, August 18, I will contact Immigration and Naturalization Ooh. Services. I will inform them of young doctor... Uh, Carol's former job at the fake medical office next door run by the Russian mafiosi fake doctor. I know exactly what was really going on there. Faking a medical establishment in New York is a criminal offense and grounds for immediate deportation. <laughs> <laughs> Your babysitter's papers better be in order when INS pays a visit. This guy's literally ethnically cleansing his building. Yes, he's trying to ethnically cleanse the building here. He's saying these people are too loud. I will call immigration services to have them deported. You now have two days to quickly and quietly vacate the apartment. If you make any noise while moving, I will immediately contact the police again. If you make any noise <laughs> while moving? Wait, you want them to vacate the apartment, take all their stuff, beds, couches, dressers, <laughs> Get all that stuff out of there. Oh my god. And not make any noise. I used to work for a moving company, a pretty noisy affair going up and down stairs with yeah. uh, you know, boxes and stuff like that and carrying furniture. What a there, lunatic, man. There are two reasons why I'm getting into this so much. One of them is he spent so much time attacking his opponents personally instead of debating. And the other thing is. There's just a big irony in how this guy treats his neighbors over some noise. Hey, Israel Israel should just follow his example and be like, hey, Hamas, get out of there. Very quiet. Like, if I hear one noise, I'm dropping bombs. <laughs> Real bombs. Uh, I warned you that I knew all the United Nations on you for making noise. I warned you that you will never win against me. You should have Googled my name, Norman Finkelstein, or gone to YouTube and entered it's my Finkelstein! name. Finkelstein! But now it is too late. This guy's insane, man. This is literally insane. This is insane behavior. Yeah, you've got uh, you've got narcissists, egomaniacs, and so on, and then, uh, well, they become your guy on the issue. You are on notice that I'm reporting you tomorrow to Child Protective Services because your child is up every night until 12 a.m. I also have reason to believe illicit activity is taking place in your apartment, which I will report to the police tomorrow. Is that a, is that an actual is that an actual offense? Because uh, my five year olds up to midnight pretty regularly on weekends. You have just committed. You have just admitted to crimes. And snitched on yourself. No one let Norman Finkelstein hear that. <laughs> this is personally insane to me. The noise stopped for three days, so I didn't call immigration and naturalization services. But now it is starting again. If you don't stop the noise, I'm calling the police. <laughs> but this will be the last call to the police. You will end up either deported, arrested, or without your child. You decide. Now get out of my building with all your stuff. And if I hear one noise, you're all going to Mexico. <laughs> Except oh. not your kid. Your kid will stay here and be adopted by a white family. <laughs> Without your child. This is just, this is insane, man. This is absolutely insane. And then he 
he bluffs again. He says, I'm giving you until August 31 to move out. If you are still in the apartment on September 1st, I will inform the NYPD of her past. It seems that she has forgotten that I was one of the young doctor's patients. I was also a patient of the Russian mafiosi doctor who had no medical equipment in the office. If you disturb me or the guests in my apartment between now and August 31, I will call the police and it will be all over for you. You decide. I don't care now if you buy 1,000 carpets. <laughs> <laughs> you must move out of that apartment by August 31. It's funny. This sounds exactly like him. <clears throat> what, what, what would you do if he was sending those messages? Because I know I'd be wearing some boots all day long and all night long and i'd be on i'd be i'd be rotating the schedule me and my wife one of us is going to be stomping on that floor all day and all night i would go down to his door and say hey how about we have how about, a conversation no. how about we have a conversation and how about yeah especially the dude's name is roberto man i'd be like look my name is roberto your name is norman who do you think would win in a fight hmm? <laughs> How about no? Uh, he does kind of sound, sound like Jordan Peterson, doesn't he? Is needed a little bit. Without a population expulsion, a Jewish state would not have been established. Maybe if Jordan Peterson had some, I don't know, problems, some neurological problems or something. He sounds like... Uh, <laughs> what? Sometimes I want to call him Norman Funkhauser because... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I that, that's exactly what I thought when I saw the name. I was like, it reminded me, of, it reminds me of that super David. Oh, yeah, Funkhauser, <laughs> Finkelstein, Funkhauser. What's his name? Bob, Bob, yeah, here, yeah, this guy here, this, this dude here, yeah, super. Uh, everyone, everyone knows him as Super Dave Osborne, who were, who were around in the 80s and 90s. I only know him as Funkhauser because of Curb Your Enthusiasm. He used to do the uh, so he, 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 he. He was a comedian. Then he went into he played a super uh, uh, stunt guy, Super Dave. But then he started doing the uh, Hagar commercials. Still not wrinkled. That's funny. And then he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's funny. That is funny. Uh, he said he'd forget it. I remember this. Wait a minute. All right, finally. There it is. I cannot believe. <laughs> that's one of the, that's one of the coolest scenes ever you gotta back I it up you, what i thought all last night if rabin can break bread with arafat i can have chicken at this anti-semitic shithole <laughs> <laughs> so it's a palace uh, it's a palestinian chicken place everyone and he shows up with a yarmulke the yarmulke yeah i can't go in with wearing this yarmulke oh, you're just no. shoving it in their face let's go in <laughs> Anyway, very funny scene from a very funny show. Um, <laughs> let me read some super chats. Martyr Mouse said, Turkish Italian plumber in the house. Hey, I don't have that mustache anymore. What are you talking about? Rick Newton, there was once a false prophet named Momo. He liked to kill, rape, and plunder, pulling wool over Muslims' eyes. A slow death, Islam now dies. Is it any wonder the fake prophet in hell made a blunder? It's pretty good. It's pretty good, but it has to be adapted to modern times more. I don't know what that means. Just wanted to say something. Um, Raisin Bread said, please do a live stream on how Kenneth Owens is dangerous. The comment section of her YouTube videos are all filled with messages from well-meaning conservative Christian women who shower her with praise. Um, I, I said a lot about Kenneth Owens. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about her. What do you think, David? Uh, I don't. Did we do a live stream on that? We did a live stream about her because of her whole thing about Andrew Tate, defending Andrew Tate. In the that past. was the last thing we did. We didn't do yeah. something after that. No. Let me, let me check. Let me check your. Let me check your shows. Yes. Uh, yeah. Insanities of Norman Finkelstein. Growing up in Israel, Islamists kidnapped three hundred children. John Joyce said Norman speaks with the same vigor and speed as two turtles having sex. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> did you catch the part ways that bigger and speed. is part of the human condition <laughs> by the way shave that damn mustache for alan's sake 
uh, <laughs> I did hear that part. There was a part where he did say that. Uh, he, Unquote. He did say something along those lines. Um, Unquote. What's, what's funny is that whole uh, turtles having sex reminds me of uh, a video of just a video that was zoomed in on a turtle's face in the end. <laughs> It was very disturbing. Uh, it's disturbing that you're even talking about it and that you watched it and remember it so fondly. <laughs> <laughs> Just hey, 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 don't let don't let anyone in Pakistan I mean uh in Pakistan see it or that'll become their new uh their new thing to watch over there. It's actually a very interesting video. You should look it up. Uh, and it's not very explicit. It's not explicit. It's not like porn or anything. <laughs> and now Pakistan leads the world in searches for turtle porn. <laughs> I don't know if it's considered porn when a turtle watches it, but uh, it's not the same thing. But uh, it's just it's like zoomed in on the on the face of the turtle, and it's like just the turtle making weird noises. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. No, it, we need further description. In fact, the me, turtle me, makes it, noises. Let me pull it up. I used to have multiple. I had turtles when I was growing up, apart from a, a rare hissing sound. Uh, they didn't make noise. It's different when they have sex. Uh, well, wasn't, what was, is it if you read your book, Righteous Victims? You can the, read it. When they have sex, all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and read it and read it and read it as I have. You will find barely a word about the Arabs being motivated by anti-Semitism. It exists, it, even, I didn't say it doesn't exist. Ah, you the, agree that it uh, exists. Hey, I don't know a single non-Jew who doesn't harbor anti-Semitic We're sentiment. talking about Arabs now. Yeah, but I don't know anybody. That's just part of the human condition. Just Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. that's, also, that's, that's a very weird statement. All human beings hate jews that sounds it's like a, a fact very, very weird it's just saying. being human so of course it's part of everything anti-semitism yes, uh, yes, and anti among the arabs so that this they just skipped past that but that's a very weird thing to say is it not anti-semitism buddy that's just proper anti-semitic we're sentiment. talking about arabs now yeah but i don't know anybody that's just part of the human condition anti-semitism so and uh, look, I don't know anybody who doesn't hate Jews and hate Mexicans living upstairs from them. <laughs> it's so, just it's just part of the human condition. Anti-Semitism is part of the human condition. That that's such a weird statement. I just I have to think about that lengthily. I know people are saying, what? What the hell? But yes, that's that's a very very strange statement. I I caught that too when I was listening to it. I still didn't go through the whole thing. I think I came far as far as uh, halfway through the debate or so, and it was already very painful. And I saw later parts because uh, they were relevant because they were in clips and all that. Um, there was one thing, which is very funny. This guy here, he's the calmest and most reasonable guy in this whole debate. Actually, you know what, Benny Morris is, a, is probably the most reasonable. But he makes points, very deceptive and very bad points, in a very calm manner, including something about targeting Jews versus targeting Israeli Jews. He doesn't have a record of deliberately targeting either Jews or Israelis outside Israel and Palestine. So, you know, all this talk of... Um... Unlike the Hezbollah, which has... Look, here's his, his response to... Uh, Hamas targeting Jews. Jews. They they practice with a make-believe guns and uniforms when this they're is... five years old in the kindergartens of the Hamas. At the instruction in Gaza, of the Commissioner Gaza. General of UNRWA, right? I didn't say that. I said the Hamas has kindergartens and summer camps in which they train okay. to kill Jews, children secondly, aged five and six. Secondly, you keep you keep saying Jews, um, to which I would respond. They use the word Jews. To which I would respond that Hamas mm. does not have a record of Burn. deliberately targeting Jews who are not Israelis. And in fact... He just burned him up. He's like, oh, you said Jews. They said Jews. <laughs> but did you hear his response here? He says they don't have a record of targeting Jews uh, that are not Israeli. 
That's his response to the whole Jews thing. Of deliberately. So I would respond that Hamas does not have a record of deliberately targeting Jews who are not Israelis. And where, what where the hell they, does it even mean? How in the world is this even relevant? And where would, I mean, where would they be doing this? Hamas is right. What do you mean? Why isn't, why isn't Hamas attacking <laughs> Jews where? <laughs> I mean, obviously, if you're Hamas and you want to kill some Jews, there are some right over here. Where's he? Where? Sh where should they be going if they have a problem with Jews, according to him? So, Hamas repeatedly says we're going to kill Jews. Mm -hmm. They says we're going to destroy the Jews, uh, cleanse the Jews, and so on. Because that's this what guy Muhammad, like... Muhammad said. Muhammad did not say. Um, Oh, Muslims, the, the, the hour will not come until you fight the Zionists. Yeah, yeah. He didn't say that. He said the But Jews. in response to that, this guy is like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I have a problem with that because when Hamas speaks of Jews and of targeting Jews and cleansing Jews and exterminating the Jews, I don't see any record of them ever targeting Jews outside of Israel. So therefore, we shouldn't say Jews. What? I, it, this is just such a sick way of deflecting from the point. Yeah, imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine Israel just like bombed the entire population, the entire population of Gaza, and you say, "Ah, you're clearly, you're clearly trying to exterminate the population of the Palestinians." And they say, "What? We didn't attack Palestinians in in America." Yeah. So therefore, they would suddenly they would they would never defend they would never accept that sort of uh, defense. But they accept, see, it with, is, they accept it with Hamas. This is part of the uh, Hamas charter, where it says uh, where they look forward to uh, Allah's promise, no matter how long that should take. As the Prophet said, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight the Jews and kill them wherever they find them, and so on. But then this guy responds and is like, okay, but um, I don't remember Hamas targeting Jews outside Israel, so therefore we shouldn't say that this is all against Jews. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. It's like, it would be funny if it wasn't so insanely, I don't know, it, it, is, it is genocidal. Like if you, if, you, if you deny the existence of these terrible, horrible genocidal actions, and ideas, then you are pretty much making an excuse for them and allowing them to be continued, to be carried out. It's pretty much as bad as approving of them of those. Pretty, pretty much. Plus, we have Hamas spokespeople obviously calling people to kill Jews. And even one of them calling people to kill Jews around the world. Upon which uh, some in the Hamas leadership responded and said, "Oh no, 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 we don't agree with that entirely because we are only for killing Jews inside Palestine, not around the world." This is so, so, so insane. Let me bring that up and see why this is no problem. Apparently. This is what he says. We must kill every Jew around the world with Allah's help. We must slaughter them with Allah's help. Alhamdulillah, that's what he says. And then here. Look. A knife costs uh, five shekels. Buy a knife and sharpen it. With those five shekels, what does it say? With those five shekels, you will humiliate the Jewish state. You will spend five shekels on a knife and then kill a Jew. Jews have spread corruption and have acted with arrogance. His instruction here is very, very clear. People of Jerusalem, we want you to cut off the heads of the Jews with knives. But then, and this is a this is a Hamas spokesperson here. But then, this guy comes in and is like, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, yes, Hamas. 
does say that and does do that. However, we can't say that they are anti-Semitic and against Jews because they haven't been targeting Jews outside of outside Israel. What kind of a stupid objection is this? And this is just one of the many phases of these Hamas apologists. And in fact, it also doesn't have a record of deliberately targeting either Jews or Israelis outside Israel and Palestine. So, you know, all this talk of... Um, Unlike the Hezbollah, which has targeted, well, we're talking targeted about, Jews outside, we're talking outside about, Palestine. We're talking about October 7th and Hamas. If you'd also like to speak about Hezbollah, let's let's get to that separately, if you if you don't mind. Um, so again, um, genocidal. Well, if if that term is going to be discussed, my first response would be, let's talk about potentially genocidal actions against Israelis rather than against Jews for the reasons that I just mentioned. And Which is very weird because uh, the Hamas charter itself explicitly speaks of eradicating the Jews, not eradicating the Israelis. Um, <clears throat> St. Paul said, I want to convert to Islam, but I can't fight the urge to fornicate, drink alcohol, and pee everywhere you see. <laughs> that's what we hear from the Dawa guys. <clears throat> yep, that's what Daniel Chuchu says. Zarathustra Serpent says, hey, AP, I'm an Israeli philosopher, and I would like to come on your channel and talk to you about the connection between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. I already know the connection between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. I don't need to talk to you about this. In your face. <laughs> Thus spoke Zarathustra. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe one day. Also sprach. Zarathustra. Is that better? Also, also sprach. Also sprach. Sprach. Yeah, yeah. Zarathustra. Call of Ghidorah said two questions to AP. What separates Ibadi Muslims from Sunni or Shia Muslims? To David Wood, what do you think of Nordic paganism? Pretty stupid. No, no for you, AP. Oh, what do you think of Nordic paganism, David? Uh, yeah, a bunch of nonsense. I mean, th those are, uh, those are, uh, quite a few of my ancestors, those Vikings up there, but yeah, pretty stupid. Makes for good comic book movies though. You are being very Nord, Norsophobic, Nordophobic. I didn't even know that still existed, but it does. You actually have Odinists and so on. Anders, Anders Breivik was actually, a uh, even though every, everyone always said, oh, if you're going to condemn if you're going to condemn terrorism committed by Muslims, then what about the Christian terrorist Anders Breivik? That dude's an Odinist. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm not and, sure if they actually knew, believe it. And I knew it. one in college. But I, I don't, I'm not sure if they actually believe in it, even if they like uh, take those positions. You know, I, so, Some people just do it because they think it's cool. Well, some people, aligned. yeah. But some, some, some uh, losers are like, oh, Thor. <laughs> <laughs> I like Thor. Chris, I like Chris Hemd. I mean Thor. <laughs> um, what separates Ibadi Muslims from Sunni Muslims or Shia Muslims? Um, it is, I personally haven't ever studied Ibadi Muslims that much because uh, it hardly comes up. Most people don't even uh, know of the existence of Ibadi Muslims. But Ibadi Muslims are primarily today in, in Oman. Um, in fact, in Oman, uh, it is Ibadi Islam is the is the majority religion, is a majority Islamic uh, branch. But um, so people say that they uh, are an offshoot of what was considered the the Khariji or the the Khawarij, the those who dissented and were neither Sunni nor Shia, and who have um, who have gone their own path and all that. But that is a kind of a contested issue. Um, what are their their differences? What separates Ibadi Muslims from them? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think they follow most of the hadiths as authentic that, that Sunni Muslims also follow, but they also have their own sources. And I'm not sure if they have any differences on the whole, um, on reading the Quran aspect, but they've always had their own leadership and didn't follow the the the, the other caliphs or imams. This might be an interesting research topic. I could sit down and, uh, you know, look into that thoroughly and maybe talk to somebody. 
And we we should we you. should do something because I've gotten requests over the years, but I've just never done it. Just like something breaking down. All, I can't even say the word sex because you'll start giggling. <laughs> he said sex. <laughs> <laughs> he said sex. <laughs> yeah. But but like a thorough video breaking down all the uh, different sects of Islam. Careful, don't say don't say that. Um, CCA. What about the Baha'i faith? Uh, I know very little about it. Very very little about it. Always wanted to have someone to talk to. Yeah, I find a anyone. find a Baha'i guy and uh, have him on here. Find a Baha'i pen pal. Uh, doorknob head says Igto Ibadi's going their own way. That's good. Igto. Um, Marvo 92. I met you at Sacred Mossad Hasbara meeting in Tel Aviv. Thanks for the powerful Dawa brothers. Take my jizya from Mitch. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Yes, yes, thank you for the shekels. I remember. I couldn't see any, I couldn't see anyone's face <clears throat> in the meeting in Tel Aviv though, because it was all secret and it was dark. So, I'm not sure how you recognize me. Uh, Lucid says people who complain that AP should be going after Xtianity as hard as Islam because he's an atheist is like complaining to an oncologist that he should be practicing dentistry because he's a doctor. I see the comparison and I get it, Lucid. And despite you taking my side, I must say that I do not entirely agree on the framing here because I do not agree that like different religions are diseases or anything like that um in fact i don't even agree at this point anymore that religions are or that that religions are harmful that religions are are bad or anything like that i think that they have very very good functions and they are a very much appreciated and good part of societies i wouldn't say that they are completely necessary for a functioning society but I wouldn't make an effort to get rid of religions unless we are talking about Islam. You, you know, when you were when you were just saying that the uh, the comparison, because um, <clears throat> um, back working on my dissertation, I had to study uh, Bayesianism, and uh, you end up studying uh, philosophy of science in there, and then you eventually are studying various views on the relationship between science and religion and it inevitably gets pointed out that like the and this started this started back in the 1800s started in the 1800s but it really took off with the new atheist they proclaim what, what's called the warfare or the conflict model of the relationship. There's a state of warfare or conflict between science and religion. And it gets pointed out, every scholar on the planet adhere, who actually studies the issue is in favor of, supports what's called complexity, uh, the complexity thesis. Namely, the relationship is complicated. Sometimes it could be a problematic relationship. Sometimes it could be a really good relationship. Sometimes you got an issue with Galileo. Other times the church is the one funding all the scientific research and stuff. So it's a it's a complicated relationship. But that's similar to what you were just saying about uh, uh, like society. Of course, you could look and say, ah, this religion had a problem right here and that you know this had a bad influence over there but i mean you could point to a, a bunch of completely different relationships so yeah it seems like a conflict model would uh i mean the uh the uh complexity model would apply there as well that the relationship is complicated yeah that is true <clears throat> and i i agree very much on that on that whatever whatever you said uh if, i don't know if it's anything if it's something good it was super it was super dope it was super dope Okay, then I agree with it. Zagra said, please play Finkelstein bits at two. No, I will not. I will, in fact, play him in a little bit and play, and play it on 0 0.5 speed. What's the highest that? you can go up to? Two? Two, two. Um, Is that as high yeah. as it goes? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because he would be funny to listen to it like 10 times speed or something like that. And again, I find this constant conflation of, 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 of Jews, Israel, Zionism to be a bit disturbing. That from day one. Well, to be clear, you haven't. You did a debate. Um, I remember the talk show, but you seem to imply that there was a lot of crossfire and that might have been the IDF. That I said, I that's the funny thing, the comparison yeah, sounds, between. <laughs> yeah, he's destiny sounds like the micro machine man as soon as he started talking. 
He said that there is no question, because the names were published in Haaretz, there is no question that roughly of the 1,200 people killed, 800 of them were civilians. I okay. see 850, fine. So I never said that, but yeah, then I said, no, we don't know exactly how. 800 civilians killed, no, 850, no question there. And I also said, on repeated occasions, there cannot be any doubt, in my opinion, as of now, with the available evidence, that Hamas was responsible for significant atrocities. And I make sure to include the plural. There's a lot of tricky language being employed here. You think it's called attack? <laughs> And then Des Destiny comes in there. Uh, <laughs> what I gotta do to get a 30? I'm superhuman. He's one of the fastest talking people uh, that do streams or videos. And what's funny is Norman Finkelstein doesn't like it. <laughs> Wait, what is a motor? He called it motor talking something. What was that? Motor mouth. Yeah. <laughs> With Wait. your mic, with your micro machine motor mouth, oh, man! If you were in my building, I would call Child Protective Services on you for that motor mouth of yours. <laughs> said, Do you, you really? Hotel okay. of journalists. Do you here, think that they were killed? Here we go. Uh, here the we go. Okay, we'll never answer that. I will answer the question. The pilots will out. I will kill even answer children. And it was a, because that was question. a strike. That was a drone strike. That was a proof. All the other chain that we're going to kill. I will even answer morons' questions. Children you want me to answer or do you want your motor mouth to go? <laughs> okay. You want to leave the motor running? Or can we turn it off for a second so I can speak? <laughs> answer. In 2018, <laughs> there was the great March. Uh, answer. Do you want me to it? answer or do you want your motor mouth to go? Okay. <laughs> answer. Uh, I think he did that several times, didn't he? Um, I don't know. Maybe it was just once. Oh, here. Wait. And atrocities, and I made sure to include the plural. There's a lot of tricky language being employed here. Do you think of the There's 850? Tricky. It's called attaching value to words and not talking like a motor mouth. Okay. I am very careful about qualifying because that's okay. what language is for, about. That's great. Then let me just ask a clarifying question. Do you <laughs> any more cra cracking up here. <laughs> firmly believe that the majority of the 850 civilians were killed by Hamas? My view is even if it were half, 400 is a huge number by any reckoning. Why? It's okay, wait, you didn't. I said, wait, wait, even why? if. Wait, wait, wait. wait because wait, because wait, Benny, wait, because Professor Morris, I don't know. I agree with Muin Rabani. I'm not sure if he concedes the 400. I'll say. Yeah, that, this, is, this is him. Then he makes references to Wikipedia all the time. I don't believe the guy that wrote you the read stuff. What Wikipedia said. That's great. I read and you don't even Danny speak Morris. Hebrew, and you call yourself a, an Israeli historian. I, 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 <laughs> oh yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't know Hebrew, but he calls himself an Israeli historian. That's funny. I well, absolutely. I, I, I think, think, but um, but I'm just saying. Wikipedia. I'm just saying. I'm just you saying. Believe it or not, Norm, the entire Geneva Convention is all on Wikipedia. It's a wonderful okay, website. You know but I'm just saying. I'm just saying that. I ask yeah. anybody to Aside talk from about, Wikipedia, you can, can yes, you tell you me talk what your people, knowledge You can talk to is. people who work Wikipedia, in the military. What's your knowledge? The guy is obsessed with destiny reading Wikipedia. That's that's. It's true. I don't spend my nights on Wikipedia. I read books. <laughs> I admit that as a, a signal. Waste of time. Yeah, as, as, as I, as, spend, I, know. I spend my evenings not on Wikipedia. I spend them <laughs> reading books and harassing the whoever lives above me because they, they their stupid feet walk around and it's annoying to me. And he there, there's a there's a simple solution for that. By the way, Norman, get. Whatever building you're in, get on the top floor so no one is walking above. I'm saying that as someone who gets annoyed when I hear thump, 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 thump. And so, yeah, go, go. Just, you're, you're in a hotel or something like that. Go up to the top floor. Or just get rid of your neighbors. That's awesome. Yeah, that's just have them deported. Yeah. Turn them into Remind, ice. Reminds me of get off my lawn. Um. Yeah. Let's see. I admit that as a, a signal. Waste of time. Yeah, as, 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 as time I know, time. books are a waste of time. With all due regard, <laughs> well, there. Really, are you I, letting you I, take I from them? Are two or three? As, as Andrew you Tate said. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Tate said that books are for losers. Mm. I have to agree. 
even the American judge, she must have been awful incompetent if she was unable to see the misrepresentations that Mr. Bunnell, based on his Wikipedia entry, was able to find. So this is based on the official ICJ <laughs> report that was released. Yeah, I'm not sure I if read you read it. the entire thing I or read not. every Okay, that's great. Aspect. Did you go through and actually identify any of the sources actually, for the underlying quotes? Actually, brace yourself for this, mm -hmm. and Louine could confirm it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> brace yourself. The guy is so full of himself. It's incredible. Between oh, here. This is before two. You talk here, yeah, this is the no, which that Arafat is, supported. That's what's called. That's what's that's called. That's true. Under, Arafat did support. Yeah, Arafat did support. That's why I'm not, a shitty deal with the It's not parts. accurate. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to okay. go there. It's not accurate okay. that Arafat endorsed. Okay, I'm not going to go there. Okay. Uh, the it's called Palestinian under Parliament. international oh, law, use Kogans or peremptory norms of international law, the inadmissibility of the acquisition of territory by war. That is not controversial. It's not vague. You couldn't put it more succinctly. You cannot acquire territory by force under international law. Well, on the West that Bank is, before 67. Is, Who on this trip before 67? Mr. Bunnell, don't change the subject. <laughs> If you don't know what you're talking it's not about, about at least you say, have the you know, at least have the humility. Two, you talk how, about how chapter close six. Two, four, two you don't know how, chapter how six. How close has two four two gotten know to the Palestinians? Six peace. From tweet five, <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. It's just so embarrassing. <laughs> at least have some humility. Between us, we've read maybe ten thousand books on the topic, and you've read two Wikipedia entries, and you start talking about chapter six. Do you know you know, you see what's happening here. Uh, people cut this part here and put it as a clip out there and say, look at this. This is so good. Norman Finkelstein destroying and humiliating Destiny. Uh, Norman Finkelstein is just beginning to insult him because Destiny is asking him about the territorial changes of the West Bank, which indeed was not taken by Israel from the Palestinian people or anything like that. It was taken from Jordan when Jordan had control over that territory and annexed it and said, oh, this will now be part of Jordan. That's what was actually taking place there. And Norman Finkelstein, as soon as he is uh, asked about these important matters, like, don't change the topic now. Mr. Burnell, Mr. Burnell, don't change the topic. You are ignorant. I have read so many books. Please go and read Wikipedia. And you cannot find this on Wikipedia. So stop distracting, Mr. Burnell. This is just so stupid. The guy is not making a point. He's not responding to the arguments. He's not responding to anything. He's not being a he's not a better debater than the layman non-professional that destiny is. He just relies on this. You know what, what you know what's a fun fact about Norman Finkelstein, actually? Um he was denied tenure, I think. Um uh, and I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to misrepresent this, but he sued the university. I think he sued the DePaul University because he was denied tenure um, because they said they said that he cannot solve a disagreement without personally attacking mm. his people, the people. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, the rejected tenure bit. This shouldn't have been a close case. He said in an email Sunday, Finkelstein's only academic output is ad hominem attacks on ideological enemies. <laughs> and the board voted in favor of denying his tenure because he just uh, resorts to insulting people whenever people disagree with him. It's pretty much the reasoning here. And doesn't add, other than that, to academia and education. Very, very funny. But hey, this guy is the hero. The hero the Palestinian side needs. <clears throat> Monitoring hysteria, hysteria said, David, can you lower your microphone just a little bit? No, you can't. No. Um, Farfour said, Destiny is an ultra-crepidarian. 
Joe Flomeister, Norman Finkelstein, officially a comedian. Now he is, always has been. Abu Parker said David would reference Seinfeld. AP, do you like American sitcom Seinfeld, Friends, Office, Frazier, Happy Days, or David Wood's favorite Sanford and Son? What is Sanford and Son? You don't know Sanford and Son, man? I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but. It sounds like a terrible thing. Yeah, it was Red Fl Yeah, it was uh, Fred G. Sanford and his son Lamont, and they ran a junkyard. This is way back in the day before you were born. That sounds like the worst thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, they had some of the coolest characters of all time, man. Aunt Esther, my goodness, man. You old heathen. Um, I um sitcom is a different thing. I like I like uh certain comedy shows, not sitcoms, not the traditional sitcom. I don't know. Do you still only refer to shows that are actually sitcom that are like shot in that specific manner as sitcom? <laughs> I have two shows that I like that are comedy that I've loved over the years. And those are, uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, which is just, it's, it's hilarious. I love it. And, uh, curb your enthusiasm. Those are my two favorite comedy shows. I love them. I love them. I love them. Very, very funny. The Uralic tribe said, clip that. What a fantastic moron. Also, David, would, would you debate Hamza from Hamza's Den? Hamza also does regular live streams on the show Fab Hijab. We got you covered. He called AP a fruitcake. <laughs> well, I will uh, debate Hamza any day he wants to. <laughs> Fact, Hamza, open invitation. You want to join us live? Let us know. I don't think he would... No, that, I don't think he would either, but to be honest, because all we can do is um, extend the invitation. I did visit him in the past and it didn't really go very well for them. Hey, wait, is that where they is that where they were trying to convince you that Mecca's in the Bible was at that show? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the dude, and that dude was thinking he, and that dude is like, Oh, but when David was hiding from Saul, where would where would he go? <laughs> Mecca, obviously. <laughs> Like insane. That's this video here. I published it on my own channel. It was I was there for an hour and debated these these geniuses. It has three hundred and eighty thousand views, uh, and it just they just look ridiculous in their attempt at trying to argue that the Kaaba is mentioned in the Bible. So always you can always go check that out. It was a very very nice exchange, not for them. Um, yes, but David said he would. And Hamza is also always welcome to join us here. We like to make friends. Mm -hmm. And I would think that he could find that we are that we are good people to make to be friends with. Yeah, enough of all the hostility. Stop whining about us and just join us live for a discussion. Pretty simple. Hmm? Yes, yes, inshallah. Um, is what Khamenei is trying to doing to Uyghurs genocide? Uh, people call it cultural genocide. Not sure about the terminology here. Um, knows too much that the ICJ, much like the UN, has no credibility to judge anyone. It is completely biased against Israel from the same reasons the UN is. We'll see. We will see about that. I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, my prediction will be that is is and has been that uh, the ICJ will not conclude that uh, that Israel is, is is committing or allowing a genocide it won't happen. It's and Israel will have will 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 easily make that case. So wouldn't be too quick to make that judgment here. Blue Moon said, "Why they use Israel map as Palestine? Palestine is all the area, including parts of Jordan, Lebanon, Syria. Does indigenous pe people in America say white European colonized only part of USA and not Canada?" I don't know, but Israel should be all of the Middle East, actually. <clears throat> That's a good Israel, idea. That's a good idea. That would solve a lot of problems. Yeah, Israel should take over Israel all should of the annex, Middle East. Israel should annex the entire Middle East. This just in from Apostate <laughs> Aladdin. We can see here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat the Goat says, uh, poor Winklepeen, destiny smashed goat. his human spleen. Pet the Goat. 
Avi, Avi Gnuth says, I'm a former IDF soldier. My first commanding officer was a Muslim. This, along with the many Muslims in the IDF and in Israel in general, may be why Israelis are against the demonizing Islam. Love you both. I can see that. Yeah, I we can figured that out. That. And and we uh, and the our conclusion based on all of this was this as far as the islamic perspective is clearly a an ongoing religious war against jews that have been going on from the time of muhammad and it seems that needs to be responded to israel doesn't want to do it because they have tons of muslims there and they even have muslims in the idf and so on and so the task therefore falls to us we have to we have to deal with the uh religious side of things for them because they don't want to go there plus there's also the undeniable fact that islam is a religion of peace mm -hmm. and yeah, there's uh, that too and with that in mind of course it would be yeah. inappropriate to yeah. that's what islam. A, that's what apostate al Adin would say yeah the haywire 924 said norm is a staunch apartment <laughs> apartment height supporter <laughs> <laughs> Apartment height supporter. What an evil person. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. Uh, AP David, what are your opinions on land acknowledgements, i.e., this college grad ceremony is taking place on the traditional surrendered lands of the Apache Nation? Would Al Anzar University say that about Coptics? I don't know. I think yeah. all lands should disappear. Yeah, I want to go to. I want to go to Mars so I can actually be the first person there and maintain my land forever. And de deport anyone who, who comes illegally. Mm -hmm. I would just shoot everyone who tries to land on there, you know, like immediately on site. Um, <clears throat> John Choi said, are you all aware of Norman's temper tantrums with his Hispanic neighbor? Wait, he, he had temper tantrums with a neighbor? Wait a minute. Child protection services on them? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, whoa, whoa, whoa. you should investigate this. I should look into I bet there are some documents that I can find. Mm. Public ones. Possibly. Huh. Interesting. I will look into this, John, and I'll get back to you. Uh, knows too much said what Balazdini, Balazdi Nazis did on October 7th actually fit the definition of genocide. Its scale was only limited due to power. That is true. That is true. That is true. Yeah, so what you're pointing there is the intent when when we're talking about the question of intent the intent is to wipe is to completely wipe out a group yes they just don't have the they don't have the ability the intent they actually intend to wipe out the jews but the jews are not having the same intent for the other side so yes, if you so want that, to establish intent mm -hmm. that would hamas would be guilty of actually of of genocide yeah, that, so the dynamic there with Israel and Gaza is that Gaza has the intent to commit genocide, but not the ability. Israel has the ability to commit genocide, but not the intent. And since Hamas actually tries to do everything they can, Israel retaliates. And then Israel, which could easily genocide the entire population, is accused of genocide for going after the people who actually exterminated jews yeah uh somebody said october 7 was probably just a rehearsal of gog and magog and that makes sense uh makes sense makes sense um gurgly oscula says sorry for the overlay in overly inflated currency after watching finkelstein even an atheist should believe in demonic possession what is this currency what are we looking at H-U-F. Is that Hungarian? I think it is. You don't know anything. Hoof. 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 Let's see. Yeah. Hungarian Hungary. foreign. Yes. Yes. I knew it. I knew it. How could I possibly have guessed that something starting with H-U H -U is Hungarian? Wow. Nobody could have figured this out. Pro note says, here comes the money. Oh, thank you. Shekels. Thank you. <laughs> Shekels is, my, says, shekels is now my favorite form of currency it is uh, I, it I even sounds it. cool shekels they look kind of nice too i thought i have some here but no you're trying to pull out some shekels i think I, no yeah. i got some shekels yeah. yeah where i'll show everyone some shekels i'm not talking about the coins i got the coins laying around i'm talking about the 
the real shekels. The real deal. I mean, I'm talking happening. about the paper shekels. What? Ooh. Cha ching You thought that was Ooh. all? Wrong. What? <laughs> I got all the shekels. I got all the shekels. You keyboard jihadis, I buy and sell you guys all day, every day. What? And I make it rain. Um, it would be nice if that if, if that was even if that was a lot of money. Uh, yeah, I know. What is it? A hundred shekels is twenty seven dollars or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got seventy shekels here. So. Yeah. So calculate that for yourself. Velvet Jess said, "Why does Finkel fart sound like someone's someone's got his leather strap in a vice? What a jerk." It's very disrespectful and shouldn't talk like that about goats. Heavens to Murgatroyd. White Lily says, I need you guys to go on a rant in Norman Finkelstein voice. His voice is what I picture Rasul the Lost Messenger sound. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. I can't really do it. I, I keep, when I try to do the Finkelstein voice, I keep sliding over to jordan peterson on accident yeah and, and people more. people point out when i do a voice that it's a little in the direction of christopher walken but i'm actually doing snaggle puss from the cartoon oh that's funny carson death said normal has made a career out of jewish self-hatred well if it pays you know, why not <clears throat> Loni crow said mr apostetti Mr. Mr. Apostetti, Mr. Apostetti, Giuseppe Mr. Apostetti. <laughs> that could be your name, your new nickname. Yeah, that is my nickname, Giuseppe actually. Apostetti. It is actually. In your experiences with dealing with Dan Lake, Kikachu, and Asadula, uh, <laughs> haven't heard that in a long time. What happened to that guy? How would you compare Daniel to Asadula? Who is more insufferable? You know what? I can't believe I say this because nobody has ever asked me to compare those two individuals. But to be honest, I think Asadullah was more insufferable than really. Kikuchu. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, all I, this was years ago, and he messaged me, and he's like, uh, "Hey, I want to debate you on blah blah blah." I don't remember what it was, and I was like, "Sure, fine." And then he starts sending me these messages, but they're like filled with insults and stuff like this. <laughs> and i'm like uh i'm like because i had no clue i had no clue who he was right so it's just like a, it's just a it's it's a random guy online who's who's uh responding like this and then so finally i'm just like yeah i'm i'm not interested dude we have to we would have to at least get along to the extent to set up a debate and agree on a format and stuff and if you just like uh you, you're trying to just start insult battles uh not interesting and then he spent like the next five years with all his fans going, why are you running from Asadullah Ali? You're running from him. Um, so yeah, not, uh, don't have a particular, by the way, if, 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 if people don't know who we're talking about his claim to fame, as far as what we've seen, that was the guy that we played the clip multiple times. That was the guy who said, uh, that he's talked to hundreds of Muslims at, in madrasas and mosques and so on, who actually are only pretending to be Muslim. They're they're actually closeted ex-Muslims. He said they're 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 me they're people who have who've memorized the Quran, and they're coming up to him saying, "I don't really believe in this stuff." That was that was that guy. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Um, I've been attending a number of MSAs and uh, youth organizations, and some of the things that the youth Muslim you approach me with have not only been shocking, but uh, at the same time, enlightening. So I wish to share some of those stories with you, and then we can go into the substance of this lecture. So one of the more shocking things that I have experienced over the course of those years is are the number of young boys and girls, aged between 13 to 18, who have openly declared their apostasy to me. And I'm talking within the hundreds. However, at the same time, they have also declared to me that they are uh, they are copies of the Quran. They are leading prayers to the Masjid. They are mm, they're leading prayers. In they don't believe it. Patient, right? And they are still leading that life while simultaneously declaring their apostasy. Now, of course, they're not open about it, but they're sharing with me because of their concerns. 
don't understand. You know what's messed up about this? Mm. Um, as much as I like to believe this and use this to say, look, even this guy is saying so many people are leaving Islam. There's also the, the issue that I know this guy because I interacted with him and I, have, I had quite the history with him publicly and privately. And he might just be like extremely inflating the issue and making up like details uh, just to attract more attention or to present himself as important as knowing about things nobody else knows and so on. Uh, yeah, he could. He could that, he that's could, the thing about this issue here. When yeah, he, he could be. He could be. Uh, <laughs> he could. In other words, there's no question that there are lots of uh, closeted ex-Muslims. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're talking what 24 percent as of several years ago, 24 percent apostasy rate among young Muslims. Now, some of those would be uh, would just tell their families, "Hey, I don't believe in this stuff anymore." But a lot of them, because of uh, cultural pressures and family pressures and so on, would keep that quiet the question is are they running up to this guy and and telling him about it i say i say maybe i don't know but yeah i could see i could see doubting what this guy says just because dawa is basically compulsive lying yeah and and i i messaged with this guy a lot like in in, in private he was telling me that uh that he really loves me and things like that so mm -hmm. uh and then, yeah. then this guy again. this guy messaged me and he's like uh he told me in confidence, he said, actually, I'm a, I'm a secret apostate just trying to scam. The <laughs> point we're making is it's easy to just say stuff, right? It's easy to just say okay, stuff. But, okay, but I'm serious. He actually did tell me that that uh, he one day said something very weird to me, uh, which is that... Uh, I love your mustache. No, no. He's, he said some Like, uh, one day I sent him a... It's like uh, a fireman. He publicly, was, uh, he publicly called me names and was like oh he is this and this i bet he's telling people not to talk to me and he's a he's a pompous this and this and that and all i did in response to that was just send him a youtube video to the soundtrack of the old show um care bears <laughs> And, and he responded, that is my favorite show. I have always pictured myself as a heart bear with the power of heart. <laughs> See, he was insulting me. He was actually going on this whole rant and insulting me to other people in public. And I just sent him this the link to Care Bears, which goes like, I want to be a Care Bear, a Care Bear. And um, <laughs> later he messaged me. And he said he actually uh, he actually really likes the Care Bears. He actually he did actually respond with that. And I, I'm serious. I'm not I'm not making this up. He actually responded by saying that he likes the Care Bears, and he appreciates it and he can relate to it when I send it to him. So it's it's a very strange person. But then later he says he hates me and he wishes I died. I have so I had two I had two parents. One one <laughs> made me watch Care Bears. The other made me watch. Palestinian children's TV. So, <laughs> can you imagine if Care Bear was like the Palestinian TV? Like, if the Care Bears were like Farfour? <laughs> hey, we should. Hey, you, it's a cartoon. You, we could take some clips and like dub it, <laughs> dub it to make it Palestinian children's television. <laughs> we could totally work on that. All right. Um, anyway, let's get rid of this weirdo here. Um, yes, I'm Terror Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jihad Bear. I like Jihad. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're, they're all versions <laughs> like there's Rape Bear, <laughs> like Terror Bear, <laughs> <laughs> Genocide Bear. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Anyway, so, um Messianic about uh, Bonermisms became a YouTube member. It's a very nice name. Thank you so much and welcome to join the club. Farfour became a member. No, Farfour didn't become a member. Farfour is already a member and said, Norm talks like the kid that gets called on to read for the class. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. White Lily became a member. Weren't you already a member? I'm pretty sure you already were a member, White Lily. But welcome to the club. 
Eden Baum became a YouTube member. Welcome to the club, Eden. Welcome to the cult. Now people are making Care Bear jokes. Care Bear stare. Crimson Jihad bear. <laughs> Crimson, bear. You don't even remember Crimson Jihad. That was from uh That was from True Lies. That was back when that was back when the terrorist in your movie could actually be jihadis. Can't do that anymore. Oh. Oh, that's funny. You should watch True Lies. It's, 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 we are Crimson Jihad. <laughs> we yeah. will bring America to its knees. <laughs> I got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Lane Hijack Bear. Oh, here's a funny one. Care Bear. <laughs> Care Bear. <laughs> the Care Bear Bunch. <laughs> uh, Great <grape> Bear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Terror Bears. Um... The oh, Black Angel posted the German lyrics of the Care Bear song. That's how I first heard it because I grew up in uh, watching Care Bears in German in Germany. Like, ich möchte ein Glücksbeche sein. Das wäre wunderbar. Ein Glücksbeche sein. Das ist doch so nicht klar. Uh, <laughs> um, I loved it as a child. <clears throat> Ness Evans says Finkelstein looks like a demon possessed satanic person. AP, please ask David to bring a big cross and some holy. Quarter. Why would he? Why would I ask him? I can, I just read it out. David, are you going to do anything about this or no? I will kick that demon out of him like he kicks his uh, Mexican neighbors out of his building. That's good. That's good. Matt says, "Love AP's German so based. What is based about speaking German? Is it because you think it sounds like the Nazis? It's a pretty is base. It because... It's a pretty base language." Yeah, I've said true. I've said multiple times before. I think that like people's like the like cultural personalities have something to do with like how strong their language is, and that yeah. when you got these guys, ha can I, ha can I, ha can I, ha I, going against these other guys who are like feel 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 feel, I can like tell you who's gonna win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zabuba bear, goat bear, <laughs> muta bear. <laughs> <laughs> From the Musha man, <laughs> child marriage bear, uh, <laughs> yeah, pedophile bear, <laughs> pedo bear, <laughs> golden shards bear. <laughs> oh, oh my boy. god, uh, I just bear, pedo bear, jizia bear. Uh, bear. semen stains bear, he was oh, semen scraping bear, bear yes, Dawa bear, Muhammad bear, uh, what trajectory bear, Allahu Ak, <laughs> Allahu Ak bear, Allahu Ak bear. Oh, my wife said Finkel bear, hey, that's good, <laughs> <laughs> Takia <Tequila> bear, <laughs> child bride bear, uh, satanic verse bear. The Scare Bears. Uh, people are having fun here. Zabuvi's bear. <laughs> bear. That would be that would be, the, that would be the girl bear. <laughs> oh man, tech beer, tech beer. Uh, <laughs> all right, this is too much fun. I'm enjoying this too much here. Uh, <laughs> we need we need animators, man. We need animators to a job bear. Bear Barians. Burka Bear. A flying Donkey Monster Bear. That's the Barack Bear. Barack Halal Bear. bear. Leather Strip Bear. Anyway. <laughs> John Charlie said, fun fact, I went to the same college as Finkelstein. Anyways, that's not important. What's important is you must get rid of that disgusting mustache. That's very disrespectful, and it's, it's frankly hate speech. It is. It is indeed. We thought we thought Norman Finkelstein was bad, and here this guy's talking trash. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. AP saw your history speaks debate. He just honestly denied Jews being indigenous to the land while giving migrants invaders from surrounding lands who impose Arabic Islamic imperialism indigenous status. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, how'd that go? It went good. It went good. I was a little bit disappointed. Um so the thing is, when I prepared for the debate, I was I was writing an outline. But then at some point, you know, I thought, you know what, I'm not going to write this outline. So I just I just uh, 
put it aside, but took all of the notes and sources that I had into a separate document and just prepared mm -hmm. those and thought, I'm just going to go into this and see what he says. Mm -hmm. So I went into it and I expected him to actually make a case because the guy chased me for like for, for months. I was like, why are you debating? Why are you not debating me? Why would you debate someone as stupid as Daniel Kikachu where you could debate me instead? Uh, are you scared? Who is, who's history? I mean, I've heard of Daniel Hikikachu. Lots of people have. Is is uh, do people know who History Speaks is? I'm not familiar. Nobody, with Nobody nobody knows who History Speaks okay. is. He has a he's some random person um, who has a channel that has five thousand subscribers or so, and he was really really. Who, like, who is who is he? Is he atheist, Muslim? What? He is. I don't sure what his beliefs are. He's he's not a Muslim, but he is very pro Palestine. And says Israel is committing a genocide. Mm. And he says, You are disgusting for approving of this genocide. But um, we had a debate, and I expected him to actually bring a strong case. And it was very, very disappointing because mm. his opening speech was just half of it was just repeating things that Israelis said at some point after October 7. And then, like, innocent people are dying. And, and as and as Norman Finkelstein has declared, <laughs> I have to say the guy was nice. He was he was he was good. Oh, he stayed good. on topic, and he was not a he was not a terrible person. So I actually kind of enjoyed it. Um, it was just kind of an easy debate, and that's it. Uh, so Danny the Ellis can said Norm McDonald. Norm Finkelstein, oh laughter. Norm Finkelstein, sad face. That's yeah, that's that's true. Jeremy Mott said three one one is how you ask for help without getting emergency services involved. Uh huh. I didn't know that. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that. Wait a minute. I forgot about. That. No offense, David, but AP does a better Finkelstein impression. Bull. Bull. I listen to the guy all day, so I'm kind of in the in the mood for it. That's why. The perfect bear. Uh hostage taking bear, Dawa bear. This show is good shit. I know it is. That's tunnel what tunnel building bear. Tunnel bear. <laughs> Apartheid occupation bear. Clementine. Uh, apostate bear. He's the one who gets his head cut off uh in every episode. Um Carifers called Destiny called him a dumbass. <laughs> he also said more about Finkelstein. It's some it, what, what's funny is um not Finkelstein is just insulting Destiny the whole debate long. And Destiny is just being like just laughing it off, smiling and just saying, just answer the question, answer the question. Come on, why not answering this? Why about this? And at some point he was like, Okay, okay, come on, come on, come on. Twinklestein. <laughs> he called him Twinklestein. <laughs> <laughs> Like that was the only insult I think that I that happened, and he, later he did call him Finkel Dick, to be honest. But I'm not sure if it happened during the debate or later. Um, human Shield Bear. And my wife said Jew Bear. No, that That's, was from a, that was from Inglorious Bastards. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Inglorious Bastards. That's oh yeah, true. Inglorious. That was pretty good. Jeremy Mott. Uh, John Choi said, uh, Jeremy Mott said, Norman Finkstein is a coward. Yeah. He's running from David Wood. Rick Newton said, Finkelstein is modern day Momo. Expect almost as slow and brain deficient. The, mora the morals are great either. Yeah. Fatwad said, David Wood, your impression is straight up Christopher Walken. Also, this guy is literally Mr. Heckles from Friends, guy who makes noise complaints. I've never seen Friends. I don't, I, it's I not Christopher it. Walken. I said it. It's Snagglepuss. Snagglepuss just happens to sound a bit like Christopher Walken. I don't even remember what Christopher Walken sounds like. Um, this is Apartment Hide. Norm sounds like a slow Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Uh, you mean as in speaking slowly, right? Uh, now call him normal Norman Redfink. That's pretty bad. Pretty disrespectful. Velvet Jazz said David Snaggletooth the lion imitation. 
knows too much. pro Palestinists are terrible people. Shocker. Can't say that. Uh, Robert Michaels, not to go off track, but have you seen the Muslim Cowboys? Latest community post. It's a little like the pod calling the kettle black. Muslim Cowboy? I'm not paying attention. No, I have Cowboy. not seen it, but I love that guy. <clears throat> He doesn't have, uh, I don't know, he doesn't have what it takes to be a super popular Dawa guy, but he has he has the ability to be a good second tier guy, like Fareed and uh, Sajid and so on, the second tier guys. Uh, apparently he made a joke about Hindus uh, and sexual assaults, which is very, very ironic, considering that he speaks for the Muslim communities. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, that's that's all I see here. Um, anyway, Michelle B said Norman's political cow coffee talk. Coffee, coffee talk. <laughs> political coffee right talk. Here. Welcome to mean? political coffee talk with Norman Finkelstein. Me. <laughs> Love your videos. Thank you so much, Michelle. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Lord Stan said that's like saying Nazis never targeted US Jews. That's mm -hmm. true. That's true. Seriously, you could make that comparison. <laughs> Gustavo Lerner made a super jet. Thank you so much. Jesse Grove. In times like these, we need the Sir Dr. Whitemeat. Where is Sir Whitemeat? I don't know. Barfu the Fowl says, I stopped watching Jimmy Dore because of his take on Israel after 10 7. He always had Finkelstein, Aaron Mate, and Max Blumenthal. Yuck, I was center left. Now I'm center right. I fear for the West. Who's Jimmy Dore? Yeah. Where, whoever that is. Yes. Lonnie Crow said, Rabani is the perfect Palestinian. He speaks eloquently and provides Westerners the polite Palestinian that they could make peace with. <laughs> That's the problem. CJ, AP, please share these links when live in the drop down box too. It's difficult to find some. AP, you are so loved in my family, praying for both. Thank you. That's very nice. I appreciate that. Very, very, very much. Very nice. Thank you. That means a lot. But I don't know what links you're talking about. I don't use links. I looked up Jimmy Dore. I am not familiar with him. I don't use links. I when i want to look up something i just think about it and then it shows up that's how embedded i am in the internet Katheus said please stream with loy el sharif interesting guy i did interact with him before i might just invite him and talk to him as well loni crow rabani is the perfect palestinian didn't i just read this huh. ness ivan AP, try talking to Yosef Haddad. He's an Israeli Arab Christian from Nazareth. We absolutely love him. You can see some of his stuff on YouTube. I did try to connect with him. And meanwhile, know a bunch of people who know him that I'm in contact with. And I guess I could put more effort into that, to be very honest. I will I will see. I will I will try. I will see. Obi Wood and a pasta Mario. <laughs> no one wanted this war except Iran and their cronies. This is true. This is true. That is, guys, and, and don't ever don't ever forget that. So Hamas had its goals and so on. Saudi Arabia was about to normalize relations with Israel. That is the worst thing in the world to Iran. So Iran pulled the trigger on the terrorist attack. And everyone blames the Jews. The Jews. Of course you blame the Jews. Uh, why are you saying Iran? Isn't it? Aren't Americans supposed to say, Iran? Iran. He threw a rock, so I ran. Yeah. I ran. <laughs> the bald guy was decent. Norman acted like a child. He is kind of a child a little bit. Vlad Tepes. Hey, what's up, Vlad Tepes? Uh, nice thing that he did back there. Norman Finkelstein sounds so annoying. Soon he'll say the Jews should have just moved when the Austrian painter took over.
Jesse said David David Wood sounding like a little Christopher Walken. Choose more cowbell. Yeah. I gotta have more cowbell. Catheist says Norman Finkelstein Judenrat. Oh my god. Yeah. Blue Moon, few shekels for David Wood's Jew accent. <laughs> Five silver pesos made a uh, made a super chat of fifty dollars. Said instead of saying I have read ten thousand books, he should have said I drive a Dodge Status. Maybe instead of saying I read ten thousand books. He should have acted like he read ten thousand books, or should have acted like he's accurately represent, representing ten thousand books, or like he's wait ten thousand. This can only refer to the number of soldiers that Muhammad entered Mecca with. Oh, that's 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 insane. That's cool. This is a prophecy. That is cool. That's pretty cool. Wait a minute. I wanted to look at that thing a little bit more. Uh, why Palestinians reject the partition plan? And I don't even want to talk about. See, it, it just automatically goes to Jordan Peterson. I start doing the Canadian thing when I try to speak like <laughs> Norman Finkelstein. Um, where is it? Where did the debate go? Norman Finkelstein. I kind of get annoyed when when people pronounce it this way in the the English way, and call it Finkelstein or Goldstein it's or Finkelstein, Finkelstein, um, or it's Goldstein or Einstein. How do Americans say Einstein's name? How do you say it? Albert Einstein. How do you say it? Einstein. That's how you say it? That's how I would say it. Okay. I will I will allow it. I will allow it. Doesn't sound too bad. Okay, let me get back to that stream here. Just because I can. Let's see how many views it has now. 1.4 million views. Palestine. Not too bad. Uh, the Arabs will get in 37. Most of Palestine in 1947, the, the ratios were changed. But we can we can uh, uh, live side by side with each other. <laughs> People in the chat, uh, in the comments, Silverstrom said, what an unfairly set up debate. How is Norm supposed to take on Mr. Bonnell, Mr. Bernelli, Mr. Morelli, and Mr. Borrell at the same time? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm glad that this was hosted in a 1970s airport interrogation room. Really adds to the international politics feel. It does look like that, right? Yeah, in a partition Palestine. And this was the essence of it. <clears throat> it I... the stupid text on you. Get, down, get on my face, man. This room is as plain and boring as Lex Friedman's suit. Yes. Um... Okay. Hamas compound oh, yeah, that they have operated from. Young, they literally Mr. Did, you Borelli, can you can Mr. Borelli, with all Mr. due Finkel respect, Spear. with all due respect, yeah. you're such a fantastic moron. It's uh -huh. With all due respect, you stupid, ignorant moron. <laughs> and I say this with nothing but respect, you giant idiot. <laughs> Stephen Bonnell. Okay. Mr. Bonnell referred to cherry picking and handful of quotes. Believe me, <laughs> I'm a lot more literate than you, Mr. Borelli. I'm going to believe the guy that wrote this stuff. <laughs> Mr. Borelli. Oh, Wikipedia said. That's great. I... <laughs> All right, next one. Here's... Bunnell, Mr. Bunnell, I <laughs> attach value to words. Yes, you said that. When you I... value... Um, they literally Mr. Said, you can Borelli, you can Mr. Borelli, with all Mr. due Finkel respect, Spear. with all due respect. Yeah. Wait, what, is, what is Destiny saying there? Literally, Mr. Said, Borelli, you can Mr. Borelli, with all Mr. due Finkel respect, Spear. with all due respect. Yeah. What? <laughs> well, what is he, what is that's what he's saying, Mr. Is Bo Mr. Finkel 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 Finkel
due respect. Yeah. You're such a fantastic moron. It's uh -huh. terrifying. Yeah. That that wharf was filled with. You like you see, the problem, Mr. Morelli, is you don't know the ling English language. I mean, he's obviously doing this on purpose, right? Yeah. It's, it's no way that you say Bonell, Borelli, uh, Bonelli, Forelli, Morelli. Uh, it is Mr. a highly Farrelly, special intent. I'm going to add highly special intent. Did you read the case? Yeah, uh, it is Mr. a highly Farrelly, special intent. I'm going to. He is saying Mr. Farrelly. Like, how do you possibly do that by mistake? <laughs> Man. Money. You it's, just, it's, you it's just not this. Whatever this making money uh, off the conflict uh, is, the the actual I'll alternative, the actual Destiny alternative. Destiny should talk yes, about yeah, making money media, off yeah, your media idiocy. Blitz, where you go yeah. and talk to fifty million your, different uh, people your about your awesome point. solution. But he has right? a point. There. The, the issue point? is you have all to these negotiate. resolutions have gotten mm -hmm. the Palestinians no Nothing. closer yeah, hold on to a state because they haven't been enforced. Because he actually said Destiny for the first time. There was a. Go ahead. It looks like you want to say something. Just say it. I was just going to say density. Oh yeah, he should have um, called him. De he should have called him density to keep the uh, street going. <clears throat> there was a thing. Um, there was a. I think before, the, long before this debate, Finkelstein was interacting or was 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 emailing Destiny, and he referred to destiny or, or he made a tweet i think and said something like uh this thing called destiny or something like that i don't know i think that's what he said mm. is that what he said this thing called destiny i think some people know about this this guy is just it's just this unhinged crazy a thing called destiny uh yeah okay he did say that i just don't know where it is tell me what they Here's said don't just, don't just mr tell me, tell me by what mr metric. Bunnell. he's not going to answer again uh, i i don't think i've avoided any of your questions you except you except when they question. breached when they breached the threshold uh -huh. of complete imbecility so you're about to tell me by what metric so, the gaza strip okay, is a I'm humanitarian going to answer crisis you. Okay. you remember what i said a moment ago i said to professor morris i defer to expertise I look at what the organizations say. I look at what the United Nations High Commissioner Just for Human more Rights said. You don't know. You don't and know. I you don't, don't know. care. Okay, I don't that's know. Fine. Do you know how it. complicated? Have you ever investigated how complicated is the metric for hunger, starvation, and famine? It is such a complicated a metric they figured out. If you ask me to repeat it now, I couldn't do it. And yet we. I and yet he went on Twitter to claim that Gaza is on the brink of a famine. And then there and then to support that, made a post about that child that is that died because of a cerebral palsy. Not even kidding. That's what Norman Finkelstein actually did on Twitter. And just so I don't misrepresent him. By the way, I still see that claim every day. If you I know, I know. Here, let's see. The other day, Art. The other day, I participated in a debate with Israeli professor Benny Morris and that thing called destiny. Oh yeah, here he says it. Huh? That thing called destiny. They mocked the notion that Gaza was verging on famine. And then he posts this: a photo of a child that is suffering from malnutrition not because the child was completely healthy before this war and then had uh had nothing to eat left because of the war and therefore turned into this no it is because the child suffers from cerebral palsy and given the circumstances is not given the proper medical attention and special food that it requires and has now died which is a very very sad and tragic thing does this however support the idea that there is a a famine or that that it's on the verge of of a famine no it's not it doesn't it does not at all and which is why i also refuted this plus 
There is, by the way, another such hoax that is going around, which came up recently, about which that guy, uh, Suleiman Ahmed, posted. And it had like 85,000 likes the last time I checked. And they post another image of another child and say that this child is um, starving because of uh, systematic starvation imposed by Israel. I just did like a little bit of research, just looked it up. Very sad situation. I looked it up. But you know what I found very, very quickly there? So the child su uh, suffers from cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic disease that leads to malnutrition and dehydration, a genetic disease. And the other thing that I found out about this is directly from the Palestinian source, here child fadi has been in hospital for two months receiving necessary uh, intravenous solutions and having a fumigator device that opens the respiratory uh, tract the exhausted mother sits next to her child with signs of sadness and anxiety obvious on her face fearing the loss of her child the mother was overwhelmed with fatigue and exhaustion out of concern over the health challenges that face her child as she recalls the pain of loss she went through after losing her two children who died of the same disease in the past years which makes the ordeal increase the burden of her suffering and anxiety you see what is what it says here. This is a Palestinian side that is directly in, in touch with the with the family of this child that is depicted here and used as argument as proof that Israel is uh, systematically starving the children of Gaza. This article clearly here says that this child had two other brothers that suffered from the same condition and they died over the years, meaning before the war. From malnutrition or dehydration because of cystic fibrosis so as sad as it is obviously it doesn't have much to do with the war however these people use the suffering of their own children to as propaganda to accuse israel of killing children of starving the population of committing a genocide and so on This is just it's just sick to to lie about your own children, to lie about your own people when they suffer and to use them for propaganda instead of working toward a future where you actually take care of those damn children. <clears throat> um Call of Kidora said as what, what what Rabani says regarding Hamas accepting international investigations and Israel refuting refusing it true. Uh, pretty sure it's not true. But he, he was arguing that Hamas called for the October 7 um, events to be investigated and Hamas, and Israel refused it. That's not true. That's not true. No such thing happened. Plus, Israel is currently working with the uh, UN to actually have a full-fledged investigation into uh, sexual assault cases in October on October 7. Valerie D said, just finished watching Ayan on Winston Marshall's show. For your information, she's writing a book on her conversion, learning Bible, and will be having a conversation with Dawkins on religion in May, not just cultural mm. conversation. Interesting. Mm. That sounds like something David will hop on and say, you see? Oh, I definitely will. You see? David will say, you see? Atheism crumbling from within. Crumbling faster than Dawa. The atheism. avalanche of apostasy from atheism. Atheism. Athe can you can you imagine being a stupid atheist? No. <laughs> can you imagine like a I science has proven that once you become an atheist, your brain literally shrinks to the size of a donkey's brain. Really? And that's why they call that's why everyone calls them donkey brained atheists. Really? Yeah. Oh. I didn't know that. It's See? true though. There you have it. Science proved it. Uh, and if you're going to debate this or, you know, op oppose, object to this, send an email to David Wood and ask him to for a debate on this topic. Uh, Cape Apollot said, since the Quran purifies everything, sending, sending it to Mars will instantly turn Mars into paradise with flowers and 72 space virgins. Hear that, Elon. Huh. I didn't know that. 
that's a good idea. Do you think we'll see someone on Mars in our lifetime, AP? Maybe we should send everyone to Mars. Um, will we see someone? I don't know. I, I'm. I. I think I want to go to Mars and live there. That's an interesting. That'd be an interesting question. Like, if you could go to Mars and be the first person on Mars, but they can't get you back, and you're just gonna die there after a couple days, would you do it? I would. I would totally do it in a second. <laughs> I, I would totally be do awesome. Because I because I want to. I want to go to Mars and I want to remember that moment forever, which is why I would totally agree to going to Mars and then dying there after a few days. Yeah. Uh, reason and logic. NN said, David, I want to debate you on Jesus. Well. Or, David, I want to debate you on Jesus. I don't know what it actually refers to here. What do you think, David? Uh, yeah, get in line, way in line. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Knox says, "You see, this is proof David Wood is paid by Mossad." Yeah, yeah I mean, we 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 only brag about it constantly. What what more proof do you need? At this point, we are acknowledging it completely. Like what what is? <laughs> we Mossad are fully is funded to... by Mossad. Mossad created this channel. <clears throat> we years created... years ago, years ago, I'm talking way back. D Wood was still in prison. I got approached by Mossad agents. Said, "Hey." Here's the plan. They laid out the plan. I followed it. Uh, fortunately, they were working with AP as well. I knew it. And now, yeah. now we're just we're we're just following orders, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's how we how David and I got in contact because they were like, "Hey, we have this other guy. He's also doing something similar. How about you guys connect mm -hmm. so that it's, it becomes more effective?" And then we need and... you guys to have a real super dope live stream. So what's it like? We're yeah. like, "Well, that we can do." And they said, don't tell people that you're working for us. But David and I were like, <laughs> uh, sorry, can't promise. And he said, here we are. That's what we are. Yeah, because even though we're fully funded, this isn't enough shekels to keep our mouths closed. Yeah. Right? So you got you to gotta double the shekels. You want to keep this stuff secret. That's true. It's too late now. <laughs> Pat the Goat said, Winkle Cream is justified in fighting his Mexican neighbors. Needs their chicken as jizya. Word is he planning to land in the yard with an umbrella. Whoa. That sounds like dangerous stuff. Flame of Prometheus says, just tuned in and first thing I hear, Palestinian kids show. What in the far food that I just walk no, into? Palestinian children's television. Yeah. Roti Piper said David enjoyed your video on Paul versus Muhammad. You ain't the only one. It's a dope video. Hey, David Wood, on the stream you had with Harris Sultan. What is he Sultan about? You said that you might create videos about the manipulation tactics of the Dawa guys. Please do. I didn't say manipulation tactics about the Dawa guys. I just said manipulation tactics. Because people need to be people need to be aware of them. But yes, the Dawa guy, see the Dawa guys, they only they only basically use two, right? There's way there's way, there's there are more tactics than that. The Dawa guys is just pretty simple. Uh if you do what they want, they shower you with praise. And if you don't do what they want, they shower you with insults and abuse and threats. And that's that's it. <laughs> what? I just got sent something from Destiny. Um the Destiny poster. <laughs> <clears throat> where, he, where he responded to Norman Finkelstein's tweet about him, where he calls him that thing called Destiny. Mm -hmm. Destiny just made a response to that uh, <laughs> of himself. That just looks so ridiculous. Where is it? Uh, is it on his Twitter page? Yeah, okay, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. So here is... Um, Norman Finkelstein says, the other day I participated in a debate with Israeli professor Benny Morris and that thing called destiny. They mocked the notion that Gaza was verging on famine and destiny posts this in response. Oh, yeah. No, I saw that before. Yeah. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> Man, this guy. <laughs> 
Uh, Chantal Kohanzad said, do you guys, this is the thing. It's the thing. It's, um, what is that? Is that, is that, is that from that thing or that thing? It's from the thing. I think you're talking about uh, the anyway. movie, the movie, the thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It looks different, uh, but I, I think they remade this. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, David Wood on the stream you had with Harris Sultan. Why yeah, were you read Sultan? That. Why were you Sultan the whole time? Chantal Kowanza said, do you guys know who Dennis Prager is? Nope, never heard of Dennis Prager. We'd love to see you guys on his show. Which show? I, I would assume that he has a show named Prager U or something like that, mm -hmm. just yeah, because it that. sounds like something that somebody named Dennis Prager would do, although I have no idea who Dennis Prager is. Uh, thank you for everything you guys do. No, thank you. Thank you, Chantal. Not us. Thank you. Um, David, what would you say about joining someone whose name happens to be Dennis Prager and who probably has a platform named Prager U. Yeah, you guys are talking to the wrong ones. If someone invites me to something, uh, you know, uh, there's a chance I'll do it, but I don't go out like seeking it. So if you're saying, David, go try to be on Dennis Prager show, no, I tend to stick with people like that I know who are my friends. That's who I usually roll yeah. with. Yeah. I, I, now, if you're a narcissist like AP, then you definitely want to go out there because, oh, I get more fame and more attention. David is not like that. David is like, uh, he once got contacted by, uh, by, by a big celebrity. And his response was like, I would rather stick to making live streams with AP. So, yeah, David, David is based. That sounds like he would. <clears throat> yeah. One day he was invited by the great scholar Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. And she said, I would rather do something with AP despite his lower status. That's correct. Yeah. This is how humble David Wood is. Mm -hmm. uh, Gulnath, uh, Gwyn Gwyneth Isaac Gwyn said, Gwyneth. <laughs> <laughs> Gwyneth Isaac said, Infowars lost cred with me for Gaza support and Finkel. Why would you ever support Infowars to begin with? And and I know, I know, I know there are people in the chat now who will say, what, Infowars is good? What, Alex Jones is good? No, it's stupid. And to prove, and to prove to you how good I am, get to get on Kanye West, right when he's like full-blown mental. Kanye, tell us, tell us what you think about Benjamin Netanyahu. And then I will act like, I would act like I had no idea he would do this. And I would act like I have nothing to do with any of this. Although I am the one who set up Kanye West. Oh, well, Kanye, you're making some excellent points right there, Kanye. This is exactly, exactly what everyone, everyone's on the same page here. It's it's funny. Uh, behind the scenes, apparently, Kanye, uh, Alex Jones is the one who was like in touch with Kanye West. And he connected him to Milo. And Milo connected him to Nick Fuentes just because he was aware of, of Kanye West's... Um, extremely anti-semitic adventure that he began but then when they did a show together and Kanye West said the most insane things Alex Jones was acting like oh this is too much he knew it he knew all of it he set it up and that's just the person that Alex Jones is like I don't I don't care where you stand on any of this on this culture war or whatever it is alex jones has never been a serious and never been an honest person and is very much a fraud you see we we sit with all due respect hey yeah. we sit there and respond to apostate aladdin but you hate everyone who's popular man you candace owens Ex excuse super, me that's excuse super me smart lazy, excuse me that's super smart excuse lazy. me and now alex jones excuse me i don't hate everyone who is famous i just hate everyone period don't misrepresent me. I'm sorry. Don't misrepresent me, Mr. Wool. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm acting like a total apostate Aladdin, misrepresenting everything you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Wool, Mr. Wool, please. Uh, <laughs> Man, Knox says these jihadi bears remind me of the happy tree friends character like Flippy who would see blood and become homicidal. Hey! Hey, somebody who knows about Happy Tree Friends. That's amazing. Never heard of that one. <laughs> it's so messed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I found this, that when this I was... green this green thing looks nice, but then it has this uh, evil look over here. So I'm guessing. Did you Google Happy Tree Friends? Yeah, <laughs> I looked up Flippy. <laughs> I found out about Happy Tree Friends when I was in school, and Flippy is one of the main characters of Happy Tree Friends. It's spinoff series, Ka Pow, and it's so a playable up. character in some video game. It's so messed up. It, it starts out like a very cute kids show, and then it just turns extremely violent and bloody. <laughs> it's it's so messed up. Um, that's Knox is a person of culture. Appreciate this. Respect to you, Knox, for bringing this up. Not everyone knows Happy Tree Friends. You deserve an award. I salute you. The Crafter154 said, what is your beef with Aladdin? I don't have a beef with Aladdin. I why like why are you starting beef with Aladdin? I liked Aladdin when I was a child. That was actually one of the few Disney things that I that I liked. Um, and I, I had the Nintendo game that I played, even, of it. And I also liked the, the, the movie in general. And I was generally not interested in all the Disney movies, but I liked I liked Aladdin. Um, I think I think Gilbert Godfrey played the bird in that movie, didn't he? Oh yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I did. I wasn't uh, big on cartoons. And I mean, like Transformers and GI Joe and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, like yeah. the nice Disney ones uh, wasn't. I think I saw the Lion King and I saw parts of uh, Aladdin. But yeah, I remember him going, uh, "Oh, that's a surprise! I'm gonna have a heart attack and die because of that surprise." I thought it was funny. <laughs> Uh, that guy has an interesting sense of humor if you listen to it. Michael says, uh, so yeah, no no issues with Aladdin. It's, I like Aladdin. I just don't like the... I, yeah. I haven't watched the... the I'd have to no, watch the watched entire Aladdin. thing to decide if I have beef with that movie. But I, I haven't watched the, the live action movie that came out with Will Smith. But Yeah, that one might I, be I think, that one might be a banger. Yeah. I don't know. Michael says, stupidity of the pro Palestinian crowd is still shocking me. Choose the cow. Inshallah, I will do. Goat Hub says, why are you talking about Care Bears when you can get a goat to care for you? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever is behind Goat Hub here it has the best advertisement. Mm -hmm ideas i mean this makes serious. me want this makes me want to click on goat hub <laughs> the funny thing is all jokes aside whoever is jokingly running this account and making these advertisement statements is legitimately here, funny yes you actually have the potential to advertise for you could be a good stuff. yeah if you do not have <laughs> if you do not currently have a job in advertising you should uh get one yeah 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 Definitely. Uh, Gwyneth Isaac said, Allahu Akbar. Yeah, this is true. I, this is true. I saw it with my own eyes. Knox, no need for an animator. Just use a program to make still images talk. It won't be great, but it's easy. Jihadi Bear sounds like a fun project. You could also just take scenes from the Care Bears and just, uh, yeah, we could dump like, those. Do voiceover. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Joshua Wooden, Mr. Mr. Wooden says Finkelstein's voice sounds like the family guy, orange haired Jewish pharmacist Mort. So the anti Semitic person that Finkelstein is looks bad. SMH. I don't remember the characters and their names because I never really watched the whole, never really watched episodes through. But yeah, it's probably true. <clears throat> probably true. Stop the Jewish bears from stealing the spice. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, Mr. Boss, my wife said yes, thank you. Apparently, she knows. I can't remember. She will probably show me later. So that's that. Um, Miriam Amar said, honestly, what happened to Hart and Tosh? Uh, and this is related to Macintosh as well. But what happened to Hart and Tosh? Uh, currently none of your business, Miriam. N O Y B. If if a tune says, "Hey, leave her alone," and people don't, I gotta respond uh, accordingly. That was an N O Y B. See, I had to check for a second if I 
a brief if I if I used it correctly. Um, Leave the Martians alone, okay? Sheesh. That was Jordan Peterson. Uh, Yossi Kenner, I am trying a new argument on the Gaza war. Hamas killed 1,200 in one day, and Israel has killed around 200 per day of the war. If the trajectory continues, which army should be in charge? Huh. This is a good question. I have to think about that further. This is a serious topic, though. Nox says, please do videos on manipulation. Good stuff. I might. Don't. Yeah, uh, matter of fact, I will probably uh, I'll probably make one here pretty soon and just see if people are interested. And if they are, then I will break down every manipulation tactic known to man so that people can become hard targets and not fall for her. You see, David acts like he's all tough and he would never cry that he admits that he will break down. <laughs> yeah, you see. You see what's happening right here in front of our faces. He admitted it right here, and people will still deny it. Um, John Choice said at one twenty-five fifty-seven of the debate, Finkelstein. Hey, I don't know a single non-Jew who doesn't harbor anti-Semitic sentiments. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I looked it up. Yeah, I think it was actually you who made that comment earlier. That's a good part to look at. That's a good part to look at. I would I would sit down and to review the whole debate if it wasn't five hours long. The debate was actually four hours and fifty seven minutes. Gosh, yeah, that's how I, I wanted to go through. Uh, I wanted to go through the um, Jake versus uh, who, Jay Dyer debate. Well, that that wasn't nearly as long. I think it's like probably like two hours and then Q and A. Really? Yeah, I haven't watched. I haven't watched it yet. I was thinking like to get a couple people involved in commenting and stuff and go through that entire debate but yeah five hour debate how are you gonna do that man i would watch something from jay dyer because the guy has an interesting way to put things but watching jake is like this is just torture it's torture just watching a bunch of fallacies put together into one person and but i put metaphysician in my title so you know i'm smart he goes to mcdonald's every day and eats fallacies the fallacy burgers cars in depth said did you try sabish while in israel so how do you say that i don't even know how you say it i don't even know what that is yeah i'm not sure i mean we 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 ate it like that sandwich shop and stuff and was we're eating things but i don't know what sabish is because sometimes we're just pointing at stuff saying hey give us that and, and lots of times the guy people don't speak english and stuff so i'm not sure of everything that we ate i there, think it's but I'm at least it sabich. um <clears throat> is that is that it i think it's sabich. it looks like sabich some sort of is a it's sandwich a, it's, of, it's a kind of, penis sandwich. of bread stuffed with fried eggplants <clears throat> Fried eggplants? No. Um, hard egg boiled plant, eggs, eggs, salad, hummus, pickles, farmer salad. We had quite a bit of that stuff stuffed into some of our sandwiches, but not that particular uh, design, I don't think. It is an Iraqi Jewish dish that has become a staple of Israeli cuisine as a result of Iraqi Jewish immigration to Israel. Its ingredients are based on a traditional quick breakfast of Iraqi Jews. I have this, uh, yeah, Israel. yeah. So no, we didn't have that. But just so everyone knows, if I see one of those, I got the shekels. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> yeah. Sab savage for everybody. It's not savage. It's sabich. It's it's exactly like sandwich, right? What do you think it's based on? That's a that's a cognate word. Sandwich, savage. Don't be a savage. Say it properly. uh yeah don't be a sav don't be a savage don't say savage it's not savage it's sabich um yes no we haven't we haven't um wait a minute why am i looking it up when when cars in depth already <laughs> already explained here iraqi israeli street food pita with hard-boiled eggs oh <laughs> <From> <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you? Hey, hey, let, let's read. Let's read the first couple words and then start uh, start a Google search. 
this is this is stupid. Yeah, I could have just read this super chat fully. Instead, I decided to just look it yeah, up. Yeah, we go into a twenty-minute detour looking up pictures yeah. and stuff. <laughs> That's that could have made everything so much easier. See, this person is actually very considerate and thinks ahead. Thinks ahead, and meanwhile, we we Google ahead. Uh, Majin Bu, hey, what's up, Dragon Ball Z fan? Says, have you ever heard of Bahabazi in Afghanistan? Yes, no. we heard, and yes, we feel disgusted. Yeah, people might want to watch the uh, Kite Runner that dealt with it a little bit. It did. The Kite Runner, yeah. Or read the book. Books are for losers, as Andrew Tate said. Yeah, quit so... being a Norman Finkelstein talking about books like a nerd. Yeah, yeah, kite, kite runner. Kite runner is the first novel by Afghan American author Khalid Husseini. Um, yeah, it, it is a it is a sick practice in Afghanistan. It is culturally entrenched of using little boys. I didn't want to say no more. Rai said, any thoughts on lanterns during Ramadan and Buddhist Lantern Festival? Manichaeans had a month-long fast too, and they melded Buddhism and Judaism. Thoughts? Uh, you could speculate about origins of certain practices. Yeah, lots of, I mean, so you've got uh, Hanukkah, Festival of Lights. Um, <laughs> India also has Festival of Lights called Diwali. So... I'm guessing, I'm guessing lots of people have uh, various things where they have lanterns or lights or something. Mass tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I have to go to sleep early because tomorrow is mass. Um, thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, Michelle said, the watch runner, careful. I just thought the same thing when I said it, and now you put it in a super chat. Oh. And, and it just sounds, and it's just You terrible. guys are straight racist, man. Like reinforcing <laughs> very terrible things here. <laughs> the funny thing is, I sometimes do this thing where I deliberately, uh, de deliberately misspell or mispronounce or you know say things in a completely wrong way when i speak to my wife at home <laughs> and one day i was looking through netflix and i came across a show where i was like i was just deliberately putting all the letters in the wrong way when i was reading them and then i came across the show which was something with cobra i don't know anyway oh yeah it oh, was it was cobra kai yeah it was cobra kai yeah 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 and then i said that in a very wrong way on accident without oh, even intending to yeah. and then i was like oh <clears throat> i didn't mean to say that <laughs> that happens yeah there was a movie called porkies which i don't know why i was allowed to watch this uh when i was six but i watched it like 20 times when i was six and they had a uh they had a racist on there <laughs> and there was a there was a Jewish guy in the locker room and the, the racist guy walks in and goes, hey, is today a good day for flying kites? Because I think it'd be a good day for flying kites. And the, the Jewish guy like, it's it's not kite. <laughs> You're too stupid to be a good bigot. And uh, <clears throat> and, no, then, I, and then it was funny because the Jewish guy uh, beat the crap out of the other guy. Yeah. Now I looked up Porky's and everything has been ruined. My whole search history has been ruined. I have to go into it and operate into a surgical strikes. Um, Knox says, Happy Tree Friends Hamas edition featuring Houthis. Hey, that's a good idea. There should be a Hamas Happy Tree Friends show. Um, Alice says, David Wood's impersonations are 10 out of 10. Jordan Peterson best. That's false. That's false. AP has a, yeah, lot, I, lots of my impressions are are awesome. But uh, on Jordan Peterson, AP, AP destroys me on that one no i don't know if that's what you say how, how about no see I, I, I can't get it how about no that's way was that, even, was that even good i don't know i can't that even tell way better than mine i haven't listened to jordan peterson in like 20 years or so 
Kathy has said in Israel, they don't let cameramen come before covering the bodies. In Gaza, they don't cover the bodies before cameraman comes. That's, yeah. Skip Kolbe made a gifted five memberships and expanded the call to which I do intend to turn into a full-fledged uh, Jim Jones-like cult in the near future. So I'm, I'm always, I always appreciate the additions and the increase in numbers here, and always happy that people are joining. This yeah, once you have enough, once you have enough uh, funds, then we can uh, buy a little plot of land down in South America. Yeah, yeah. And if things go really bad, then I'll just have, make everyone uh, have a little drink. Yeah. <laughs> drink it off. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> See, this is what this is what apostate Aladdin was correct about. You, you get you're you're just sick, man. You're joking about people dying and stuff, man. <laughs> oh boy, Grip <laughs> they made a super sticker. Gosh, somebody who takes this really seriously could clip this and. <laughs> Man, script call was said for the children, for the children. Love you guys. Also, a red triangle with a P in it does not stand for Palestine. Love you, man. Keep up the good work. A red triangle with a P does not stand for P Palestine. What does it stand for then? If it doesn't stand for Palestine, what does it stand for? If it is a P, then it stands for Palestine. What he's else? Got, he's got one on his little uh, name tag there. Yeah. What does it stand for if it's not Palestine? Um, we're joking about it, but it's actually it actually stands for um, an Auschwitz inmate. Or a, a, a oh wait a minute, okay that's what it stands for. Saint Maximilian Kolbe. prisoners of war. Uh, one six six seventy. Uh, Saint Maximilian Kolbe. Okay, that's what it refers to. This is an interesting educational moment here. Huh. That's quite interesting. Um, this is a very nice super chat here. Bill says Israeli Second Amendment. Yes. <clears throat> How did Prophet go to Donkey? He says, when you're going to go live with Adam Seeker again. Again? Who? Me? I never went live with Adam Seeker. Why would I go live again when I didn't go live before? Well, how are you even going to do it again if you haven't done it? Exactly. And what? And how do you even define again? Nox said, guys, Fortnite has a Ramadan skin. Thoughts? What is that? Oh, where no. it like, it like adds like 500 pounds to you? <laughs> well... <laughs> what oh no this is this is terrible news uh i have to quickly go to uh look at my fortnite account and see what's happening there and i i cannot accept a ramadan skin in fortnite this is just absolutely unbelievable <laughs> yeah Apostate Boohoo said, AP, you need to be more considerate of people's feelings. What if a Jim Jones follower joined the stream? Got a point. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I could totally imagine somebody like uh, Aladdin making a video about the dark side of YouTube and then including that, that joke that I made about drinking. That would totally be what apostate or someone bin Laden would do. Um, cool late survivor. Miss, my wife said I was Jim Jones' follower in my previous life. Oh, really? I didn't know that. You didn't tell me about this. Uh, all right, David. What's uh, what else? Victor G said, "Have you ever heard of the Khazar Khanate and its relation to Judaism?" Yes, I have indeed. I have indeed, and there are certain theories on what exactly developed. One of the first uh, theories that I heard of was that the Khazars were actually a who were a Turkic population up there, um, in the face of Christian pressure and Islamic pressure, uh, in the middle of it chose to convert to judaism or something like that i'm not entirely sure what the 
most accepted theory on their conversion is. But what happened is that these these people up there in this small little kingdom adopted Judaism as their official religion. But what appa what apparently happened is um, that the population itself never really converted because that's not how things worked for them. The the royalty or the nobility, the people in charge, converted to Judaism. They adopted Judaism as a religion, and not much later they basically died out and disappeared when their power faded, and that's all there is. Um, they adopted Judaism. I'm not sure if they even actually practiced it or whatever they did, but it is recognized in history that that officially happened. And of course, there are some people nowadays who um, say that, who who bring this conspiracy theory that Ashkenazi Jews are actually descendants of, of those people who converted to Judaism, who were a Turkic population, and that Ashkenazi Jews are not people who descend from uh, the ancient Jews, but are instead imposters who descended from those people. And that's an, a, a hypothesis that was uh, suggested quite a bit in the past without ever presenting any proper evidence. And that hypothesis has been thoroughly refuted, meanwhile. And we have um, we have scientific studies which, which officially and undeniably debunked that whole hypothesis and put forth proper evidence to show that Ashkenazi Jews are indeed descendants of uh, people who lived in the Middle East in what is Israel or the land of Israel. Um, so that's that's about as relevant as it gets to any of the discussions we have nowadays. The Khazars themselves are very much historically relevant. And in terms of the genetics and their relation to Jews in general, it's just relevant to anti-Jewish conspiracy theorists nowadays. That's all I can say about it. And David agrees with me on that. Jeremy Mott says the P in the red triangle was for either Poles or political prisoner. Thank you. Thank you. David, um, anything else you want to add? No. Nope. Subra, what's that wife beater bear? This is a good beer. This is a, this is a very, very good beer. Tia said Mizrahi, Sephardic, and Ashkenazi Jews can all trace their ancestry to the Levant. Yep, has been proven. I recently posted a, a study on this because people like to talk without actually looking at the evidence. But I actually recently posted a link on my Twitter, which I could which I could emphasize further. Um, let's see, debunked, let's see where I did that, debunked, 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 thoroughly debunked, refuted, David looks like he wants to go, or go to sleep or something like that, I don't know, uh, disproven, let's see, um, hmm. I can't find it right now, but there's a study that has debunked that a long time ago, years ago. Uh, and it proves that all the Jewish groups are indeed descended from the Levant, without it, without a shadow of a doubt. But the the closest related to the land are actually the Iraqi Jews, I think. Anyway, with that said, anything else you want to add, David? Mm, I, want no. to into, I want to go into now <clears throat> reviewing the debate for mm -hmm. three hours, and. Are you on board with me? Yeah, let's do it. I was just looking up something that someone uh, whined about. What? Why did they whine about it? What did they whine about? They're whining on my. Uh, anyway, don't worry about it. It's important. I want to. I want to know. You will never know, and you can saw my head off. I'm never going to tell you. Tell me right now. Okay, I'll. No. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, now I'm really curious about where I posted that and what that study was, because now I want to have a have a look at it. Uh, Ashkenazi. Uh, I want to put it on the screen before I leave. No evidence from genome-wide data. Untangling false. Missing link of Jewish European ancestry. 
uh, no evidence from genome-wide data of Hazar. Uh, no particular similarity of the population. Good, 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 good. Okay. Let's see. Give me a second. Okay, I think I think here is a study that uh, goes through this whole thing and debunks it. Um, it is uh, titled "No Evidence from Genome-Wide Data of a Hazar Origin for the Ashkenazi Jews," and it references plenty of different research papers. That's what the full research paper does, as far as I remember. Remember. Ugh, come on. I'm not going to go through all of this now. And it says, thus, analysis of Ashkenazi Jews together with a large sample from the region of the Khazar Khanate corroborates the earlier results that Ashkenazi Jews derive their ancestry primarily from populations of the Middle East and Europe, that they possess considerable shared ancestry with other Jewish populations, and that there is no indication of a significant contribution either from within or from north of the Caucasus region. And this is one of many of these uh, researches which uh, conclusively refute that whole idea that uh, Ashkenazi Jews are somehow re related to the Khazars or anything like that. Anyway, this is just my nerd moment here. Okay. Um, thanks and goodbye. Just kidding. Uh, we will be back soon tomorrow on David's channel, I believe. And anything else you want to add, David? Yeah, how are you ruling out massive Jewish conspiracy in that study you just pointed to? Hmm? Don't even address that, do you? Well, I have to. Where's Kanye? It. Where's Kanye have, when we need him? I have to suppress it because I am also working together with the Jews to serve the Jewish agenda. And Apostate Aladdin. Hey, you need to keep some shekels handy, man. Uh, you need to keep some shekels handy so we can wave them up. The shackles. I, w I broke my shackles and freed myself from slavery. Um, oh, Black Angel, not Black Bear. Black Angel just brought up that Rebecca just made a video. <laughs> <laughs> the dark side of anti Islam. Nice. <laughs> responding to apostate. In response to apostate bin Laden. <clears throat> And um, yes, definitely go go watch that. I will share this. I will share a link to this in my in the life. Rebecca's chat. cranking out some serious content lately. I know she's making a lot of videos here, making a lot of videos and pretty good ones too. Pretty good stuff. She's pretty, good. Pretty good. She's good. She's good. I would say she's better than those. Uh, those those idiots, whatever their name is, uh, apostate prophet and David Wood, whatever. Um, Who do you like better, Rebecca or apostate Aladdin? Now, when you shake the shekels, I have to say Rebecca because Rebecca is a Jew. That's true. <laughs> uh yeah i would say i guess i guess rebecca okay fine rebecca rebecca yeah fine uh <laughs> okay all right i will see you next time we will see you next time and and we, and we will have the shekels and we will have all the shekels all of them and of course it's rebecca so go watch rebecca's video which i will also put into the description and and pinned in the chat and might also pin as a comment here with that said have a fantastic day have a fantastic day mr borelli stay close to the shekels but stay away from islam now, hold, hold on hold on mr mr wood hold on mr wool don't misrepresent me uh i get the final word here and i want to say stay away from Islam. <laughs>